running here in the four corners maiden. Right out to the lead is the Vault Legend Swamp Thing. Followed by Good Gravy and Jackie Brown closely for third. Break of two, that's Mr. Mint Chestnut in fourth. Digging in, but it's all Pandora player with a half length lead. Cheesy Hair is digging in, giving it all. She's got Captain, but it's Cheesy Hair. And look out from the back. It's Bubba Kush at the wire, but not going to get him. It's Pandora player over Bubba Kush and Cheesy Tortilla. What's up my fellow NFT collectors and horse racing fans? It's Saturday night, so it's time for Saturday night at the races at a special time tonight because it is the last night of version 2 of the beta. Shout out to Mo Noses in the house, ready to call these races. How are we feeling today, Mo? Yo, yo, what up, all? What up, chat? I am somehow tired now than I was yesterday. But I was wondering if you got any rest. Shout out to Dennis O'Connor. Ahoy, ahoy. No, it's oi, oi. Ah, gotta get that down. Shout out to Dan K. We got Nevaeh in the chat. What's up, everybody? We got all grade one races tonight. If you check the race schedule, the first one starts in one minute and 45 seconds. And then every 15 minutes, there's going to be a grade one race. Um, it looks like actually there's one extra race in three minutes. So we might actually get two races uh, before we have to move on to the next grade one. There's a USDC race coming up at 503, Mo, the USDC Classics. So we'll be able to catch that one real quick. Then after that, it's going to be yeah. all grade ones every 15 minutes. I tried to get into all of them so far. I think I'm doing all right. I don't know if my horses will get picked down here because I entered some of my S minuses. And lots of horses are entered into these races. You can see 39 horses here, 40 horses here, and only 20 of them, I think, if I'm not mistaken, maybe only 12, maybe 20 of them get selected. Is the grade ones 20 horses, Mo? Uh, yeah. All right, so we got a better chance of getting in there. Shout out to True Stoners in the chat. What's up? Let's do some racing. We got Crypto McPoopy Pants in the house. Good luck tonight if you're racing. We got Wiggins of Hip Fire here with us, and we got our first race. Race. It's gonna be a grade one. All the races tonight are gonna be a grade one. All right, this is the Crown Prep series. We got Petrocious from Balthazar Mangers, Mercedes Stins from Valley Happy. We got Chester Prigat from Mickwacky Racers. We got Mortarion Redifus from Big Brain Stables. Everfire from Fleet Feet. Notorious HORSC from Incorrigible Goats. We got Marbles from Mickwacky. We got Leonidas from Balthazar Mangers. SP the Ghost from Alejandro Fresca King from Golden Stables. Gucci D Gen Legacy from St Savage Stables. LLC notes from space. We saw that horse win last night. We got bad from Secretariat. Ace Rad from Golden Stables. Marcellus Karma from Golden Stables. Diving Falcon. Norte Rex. Angel of Death and Cyber Druid. Good luck if you're in. Here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Buckle up. We're heading into the final two hours of version two. They're online and they're off here in the Crown Prep Series Race 5. And it's Ace Rad from the outside to lead along with Patroclus. And comes Angel that back and forth is Leonidas who runs along in front of Diving Falcon with Mercedes Stand around at the top six. As they head out to shoot and on to the main track here in this seven furlong right turning affair on the dirt. And it's Golden Stable Runner here. It's Ace Rad. Ace Rad still shows here by two. And on the rail, that's Mercedes Stend who starts to advance here and challenges her leader. And goes right on by and now has the lead. As Ace Rad has moved back into second. And never mind, we're playing yo yo. And Ace Rad is back in the lead. And it's Angel of Death now, starts to push on the extreme outside with Gucci D and Legacy. And it's SP the Ghost looking for room here in between horses as they head around the turn. Half mile in the books, 47 and change. And it's Gucci D Gen Legacy. Gucci D Gen Legacy is the one to catch. And they make their way off the turn and they shake them up and head for home. And it's Ace Rad 
back in front. Ace Rad and Gucci D and Legacy these two have been going back and forth. But it's Mercedes stands once again down the rail. And a new challenger with Monterey and Redifus into the final moment here. But it's going to be Mercedes stands holding off Monterey and Redifus down at the rail and Diving Falcon. Shout out to the Valley Happy Ranch friend of the stream. He hangs out with us on uh, drop, I mean not drop days, but race nights sometimes. So let's give him a chat winner for that big win. 20 horses, grade one race. We're going to see a lot of grade one races with a lot of horses in them. Except for this next race, which is about to start in just a second. It's a USDC race, so let's get it started up. Shout out to Ronnie Lytos in the chat. Shout out to David B. I appreciate you, bro. All right, yeah, like I said, 45 seconds, and this is going to be a real money race. I'm going to load this up here, and if I can see... I kind of want to see which horses are in this race because there's probably only a few of them because it's uh oops it's the one that you actually have to have usdc and then starting with the next beta version all the races are going to be usdc races only uh we're going to be talking about what to expect whenever it begins man went back too far we got 20 seconds though because uh, we're going to have plenty of time between these races 15 minutes between each race we got plenty of time to talk about what version 3 or at least speculate a little about about what version 3 is going to be like all right here we go we got five horses in this race usdc good luck if you're in it here we go all right back on the track 50 dollar derby up for grab or usdc even in the usdc classic and they're off here it's probably talking shit who runs out to the lead and charges in front of looney crown as these two run out to charge the pack and it's mysterious waves down at the rail followed by bermuda shadow and reset gonna round out the top five as they make their way around the clubhouse turn here it is 11 furlong right turning affair it's probably talking shit, probably talking shit who still shows by half a length, but Looney Crown has applies pressure and now has the lead. It was Looney Crown and probably talking shit are neck and neck as these two head past the clubhouse. And it comes for your shadow on the outside with reset of mysterious waves as they get ready to pass the wire here for the first time. Everybody wave to your current leader. It's probably talking shit. Here is a ringing, and probably talking shit is the one to catch. But Looney Crown, Zisu, been back and forth, back and forth, as Looney Crown now takes the lead, but probably talking shit has gone right back on by. Why do I even bother? And back for rail, that's reset with mysterious ways. Now pulls off the rail and angles out for room. But he's got some room to catch up here. Three quarters and 113, and probably talking shit starts to get away from him. It opens up by four, maybe five. And Looney Crown back still on the rail with Mysterious Waves. Starting to pull off in advance around side, but reset in Bermuda Shadow. Not to be outdone, and there's four across the track here up front. And Bermuda Shadow is the only one in back here now. As reset Mysterious Waves and Looney Crown have all challenged this current leader. But Mysterious Waves is the one to sneak through. And it's Mysterious Waves now who goes ahead. Now around the turn we go, and it's Mysterious Waves. Mysterious Waves with another two lengths to go here into the final 200 meters. 18th pole, it's probably talking shit, and reset down the center of the track. One final crack here at the leader, but it's going to be Mysterious Waves. Mysterious Waves going to take this one over reset and probably talking shit. Mysterious Waves gets the win from Secretariat Stables in the USDC Classic. Uh, let's see how much money they won. I think it was like $5 to enter. I could be wrong about that, too. We'll check and see if it says. And see how much USDC they won. We can uh, figure out how much the pots are looking like. So $24 to the winner, 12 to second place, eight fifty-five to third place. And I'd like to go back to see how much the entry fee was. I know I entered a couple of them. One of them was $8 to enter. I'm sorry, $3 to enter. And one of them was $4 to enter. So let me go check that out real quick. <clears throat> money, money. Yeah, um, explicit language word at morning. Sorry about that. I would have just called, said, called him, uh, I would have said crap probably. I can't say that. My kid's here. 
<laughs> all right, let's all right, let's go to race history and see how much it was to enter that USDC DC Classic race. It was ten dollars. Oh, that was a big money one. All right, so it was ten dollars to enter. So third place actually uh, lost a little bit of money. I remember when I got third place in a USDC race, I actually won money in that race. All right, we got the Crown Prep Series round six. That's what we're going to be having tonight. We got round six next, then round seven. After that's round eight, round nine. And you guys can probably figure out the rest of them. And the culmination will be the third time derby at 659, the last derby race of beta version two. And I'll let you, Mo, since you're into the, uh, the game a little bit more, but also the Discord a little bit more, give us a little bit of an idea of what you've been feeling like we should expect to see whenever version three begins uh well we're gonna see a full money real racing money economy and again no re there's gonna be no breeding no retirement just full racing it looks like maybe we'll get 15 minute intervals like we have tonight not quite sure how the schedule is gonna look but yeah no more no more free racing and we're looking at uh four weeks to test everything out and make sure it's not broken and hopefully go to live all right, so four weeks after that, and then we're going to go to whatever they consider live. So on live, are we going to have a mix of real money racing and free racing, or will it all be real money racing still? Or is that going to depend on what happens uh, this next beta version? Yeah, I mean, until they really say they're going to introduce some sort of free side of things, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is a, you know, this is a real money game. I think just from dealing with other games like Zed and whatever, I think having a free-to-play part of it actually just kind of ruins it. That's my personal experience. I know, my personal opinion, rather. But I know most people want to get in and play for free, and they don't have a couple hundred bucks they want to spend, and I get that. But I don't know. Maybe those people need to just play Horse Racing Manager and the mobile games, or maybe play, you know, uh, Photo, not Photo Finish, uh, Gallop Racer on PlayStation. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like those are the yeah, those... <laughs> I used to love yeah. that game, but no, you got a good point there because the problem that happens when you're mixing up the real money racing with fake money racing is there's too many ways to uh, hack that because as you can see, I've got an infinite amount of money right now on this game because I can just create another stable with another email and then sell one of my horses to the other stable, put that million dollars into my stable, create a third stable. I mean, now I got $2 million. So, I mean, whenever you have uh, the real money and the fake money and people are able to sign up for free with the fake money and buy horses that can run in real money races, that's when uh, the people who are using, I mean, I guess you can call it an exploit, but the people who know all the tricks are going to be able to take advantage of them. Shout out to Jeff is in the chat. He said he put all of his horses in one race. And if you know Jeff's horses, they're all like stinky toe and stinky shoe and stinky armpit. That's going to be one <laughs> stinky race. All right, all right, speaking of races, we got the Crown Prep Series round six coming up next, and the track is sloppy. Starts in five minutes and 30 seconds. We'll run through the horses real quick because there's 20 of them, so it might take me five minutes and 30 seconds to get through them all. All right, we got three mountains from Wimbledon and GVT Turf. You got Space Wish from Golden Stables. And as we saw on the races earlier, there's going to be a lot of horses that sign up for this, so it's going to be the best horses that get picked. They're going to have like 30 or 40 that signed up, and only the 20 best get picked. So you're going to see a lot of S's, S pluses, maybe a few S minuses in these. All right, we got Red Rocks from Mick Wacky Racers. We got Case Ace from Stanky Stables. Is that one of your stables, Jeff? Sounds like one of yours. We got Hot Rocks from Mick Wacky Racers. Bomba from Golden Stables. Lagunas from Wimbledon and GBT Turf. Perched Entry from Valley Happy. Acura's F136 from Valley Happy. Space Glacier from Golden Stables. Tangled Up in Blue from Secretariat Stables. End of the Line from Wolof the Bandito. Infinity Quays from Valley Happy. Wild Smokey from McWacky Racers, Red River Hustler from Sunny Val Racing. You got What You Gonna Do from SoCal Stables. Oh, we got an A plus in here. Luna from Sundown Stables, Space AK from Golden Stables, Alpha Boom from Valley Happy, and Balthazar Mangers has the last horse in the race, the number twenty horse. That's how good old Martha, Martha Washington from down the street. What's up, Satish? Yeah, we're running our horses. We had a race starting up in about four minutes. My horses are not in this race. Uh, all the races were fill, filled up until about 5.45. That's when I was able to start getting some horses in there. But I do got Mo Don't Even Know racing tonight. Um, I got Vader in a race. All my best horses are racing tonight, so I expect to get a win or two. I had a big night last night. Of course, right before all the horses get demolished or destroyed or reset, they start coming into uh, form for me. That just figures. 
All right, guys, we're going to have a lot of time between races, so me and Mo are going to be probably just talking trash. Um, if you guys want to chat, if anybody wants to come on and hang out and talk to us, anything y'all want to talk about in the chat, just let us know. We'll probably talk a little bit of VV, maybe even uh, a little bit of, no, we're not going to talk politics, I promise. That is going to be off limits, I promise. Unless somebody comes in here with all this Trump support, then I don't have to go in on it. But I'm going to really try to stay away from that topic. But I do want to talk about uh, like what I've been watching recently. Because on YouTube, uh, I've been getting bored of the usual old stuff. I usually just watch Ridiculousness and Shark Tank. And I'm looking for new stuff to watch. And the other day, I found a couple new uh, channels that are really cool. One of them has like millions of subscribers. You guys, at least one or two people probably have heard of them, have seen these movies. It's called Omeletto. It's like an omelet with an O on the end. And they make these short films. And they're like crazy good. Like I was watching one where this guy was trapped in a time paradox in a, a men's bathroom stall. And I was like, wow, how is this so good? And I looked at it and like they have millions and millions of views. And now they're getting like really famous actors to do uh, like Paul Giamatti did one of them. Have you heard of Amaletto by chance, uh, Mo Knows? Uh-oh, Mo. You're, you're muted, Mo. Is it just me? Mo. Oh. Oh. Nope, I'm back. Sorry about that. I forgot about my hotkey. Okay. Yep. Um, no, actually, I haven't heard of it. It sounds interesting. Omeletto, right? Yeah, check it out. It's like omelet with an O. And then the other thing that I discovered the other day, and it was just because I was scrolling through and I saw this, and it had over a million views. And I was like, how does this have over a million views? That's stupid. That's, that makes no sense. So I clicked on it, and I started watching it. And now I watch it all the time. It's so good. And it's this dude mowing people's grass. It's called SB Mowing, but what's so good about it is like he'll go up to these like abandoned houses that are overgrown everything and he'll just cut it off for free and he has all the professional equipment. He's doing the edging and he can get the before and the after and it's really relaxing. I don't know, have you ever tried watching uh, lawn mowing YouTube channels? They're getting popular now. Uh, I haven't, but I do think it's weird that we live in a world that nobody wants to work, but people <laughs> love to watch other people work. Yeah, I hate cutting grass, but I will watch You know what I'm saying? Oh, I actually, I love cutting grass. I like it. I smoke a fat joint, put on some music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're good to go. I but have uh, a really big backyard. It takes a lot. And, and a push mower. So if I had a riding lawn mower, I could probably handle it for sure. Oh, yeah. You know, I was poor as hell growing up. No shot I ever had a ride on lawn mower. <laughs> All I did was push that. But I mean, I was thinking about, uh, I told you, I got the soft wash, pressure wash uh, company that my buddy runs. Yep. So I saw work with him and I told him, I was like, yo, we should just slap a GoPro on me. Uh -huh. I was like, and I'll just start doing like first person power wash streams. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So relaxing because it's like a before and after. Shout out to Roddy Lido. He's seen uh, that guy popping up in his feed. There's more of one, more than one of them too. They're like super popular. Satish says MH370 Netflix documentary coming on March 8th. MH370. I don't know what that is. Never heard of that. Thank you, Satish. Appreciate, appreciate you, bro. Yeah, I wasn't too interested in the Star Wars posters, and I got stuck in the McDonald's line for so long, I didn't even get back until it was time to get the stream started, and the kid was playing Roblox, and he was in the middle of a dungeon. And I'm like, just do your thing, man. It's all good. I don't even care about these Star Wars posters. Did you go for the posters, Mo? No, no, no. Did they ever sell more than like 50 today? What happened with those? They sold out. They sell out instantly, but it sold out. I just checked the other uh, couple hours ago. All right, it's race time, guys. Good luck if you're in this grade one race. That shit sold out, huh? Wow. All right, race fans. I've just been informed that we have collectors at heart. Out in the world, selling out VB drops. Congratulations! Did I start it too early? Is it not starting? And they're off. They just went off. Am I behind you? Okay. Yep. I don't know what's going on. It's the final night of V2, and we're just rolling with it. And we head out the track here as Bomba with Alpha Boom, then comes Tangled Up in Blue. Back and forth, that's Red River Hustler with Martha, somebody, and it's Wimbledon Runner in the Red Silks. Because my timing was all thrown off there. Opening quarter is come and gone, it's Bomba who runs down and leads a run here over Red River Hustler as they pass the wire for the first time. And it's Red River Hustler, say hello to your current leader. As Red River Hustler runs along Martha Washington and Bamba down at the rail. And the break of two, it's Red Rocks who runs in front of end of the line. And comes Wild Smokey 
But Red River Hustler is digging in here on the extreme outside and starts to pull some length here from the challengers. But not to be outdone, it's Martha Washington. Martha Washington goes right up alongside and takes the lead. And now it's Martha. They're all chasing Martha with Red River Hustler. And now it's Red Fox who starts to advance down on the rail and moves up in the second. And on the outside, it's end of the line who's running along with Red River Hustler. Then comes Wild Smokey. Bomba starts to look for room here from the back of the pack and tucks in down at the rail, but the Red Fox is the one to catch as the outside runners here start to fade. But Red Rocks, Kick Rocks, Red Rocks even, challenging here as we make our way around the final turn. A mile is coming gone in 138, and it's Red Rocks by two. Red Rocks with Martha Washington once again, entering the fold here with Wild Smokey on the extreme outside. It's Wild Smokey with Martha Washington. Red Rocks is making her way into the 8th pole, trying to hold on here, but there's few challengers to go with Wild Smokey. Three mountains at the rail, but Red Rocks is not going to be denied here, as it's Red Rocks over Wild Smokey and three mountains. Shout out to Mick Wacky Racers. That's Crypto Big Poopy Pants' his horse. Let's give him a chat winner for that one. He knew he was going to win too. He had a bet on him and everything. Big win. Grade 1 win. Let's check him out. Tuesday's comic is a should not miss. Yeah, I think so. I think Tuesday's comic is going to be super big. Oh, uh, Mick Wacky gets first and second place in that race. Destroying the field with Red Rocks and Wild Smokey. Let's go. All right, we got another Grade 1 race coming up in about 15 minutes. We'll get it pulled up and queued up for you uh we're checking the chat talking about the drops coming up on vv mo uh let me see what you think about this lineup if you're going for any of these i know we got kang on monday we got giant sized x-men comic number one on tuesday um i forget what we got on tomorrow do we get something dropping tomorrow i think so uh pull up the store here i was surprised still that the Oh, of course I can't log in. I gotta reset my password to log in. Uh, I had to do that twice today. Shout out to hey. my poopy fans. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, I had you to uh, reset my password twice. It was it kept giving me the device does not meet security requirements error message. Oh yeah, I either get that, but right now I'm getting to just to click the continue button and nothing happens thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Shout out you to know, the but, biggest bro. Okay. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you, biggest bro. He's right. The Labiter is tomorrow. Frank Kozik's drops tomorrow. Yep, 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 that's right. And that one's 25 gems, and the addition sizes are pretty low, but it's some art stuff, so it kind of depends on if you're into those art toys. You plan on going for that one? No. Like I said, I'm, I'm primarily going to focus on first appearance, uh, Marvel, Disney stuff um, going forward. I mean, they, people can say whatever they want, but the, these brands, they, if they do sell out, they, they're not worth anything. You know, so maybe down the road, but for now, I'm just going to be stacking... I mean, I, I still think some of the best stacks in the app are possibly America Chavez. Silver Surfer, I think Silver Surfer is severely undervalued right now. With the Considering there's only one of them, there's not like five different versions and seven different poses. You know, I think Silver Surfer is a huge, huge buy. I'm just looking for stuff like that, man. I don't really care about most of this other stuff. I'm trying to move away from superheroes a little bit because I kind of feel like superheroes aren't that popular. They're not that popular with kids these days. Um, they're it's... popular with old men who collect comic books and they're not into NFTs and they're not coming to NFTs anytime soon. So, I mean, I'm trying to go towards vehicles in particular, but I do still like the comic books, especially the first appearance ones. Uh, like the one that's uh, Giant X Men number one on Tuesday. I feel like that's going to be, I don't know, that's a Grail, right? I feel like that's one of those Grail ones. I'm not a comic guy. Do you know much about that comic in particular? I. <laughs> Everything I've checked doesn't show up anywhere on the top list for me. I could be wrong on that, too, because maybe I'm not looking in the right place. But like I said, man, the only Marvel comic that I saw that's even worth anything is Captain America number one. And I still say we're not going to see that. And I know people disagree. You might be right. This one's got a 9.6 at 12,000 with 190 cells. I wonder how much those 9.8s go for. I think this is a big one because it's the first appearance of... Um... That's all here it says. Colossus, Storm, Nightcrawler, Thunderbird, and the second appearance of Wolverine. Eh, I don't, I don't know. Said, Meh. I don't know. I think, it's, I think the comic people are going to like it, especially if it's like 10,000 editions. There's going to be a lot of flipping going on that day. There's going to be a little bit of profit going uh, in that comic if you get it, no matter what the rarity is. So that's definitely a drop to go for. I would not miss the Tuesday drop. The Monday drop, though, 
Monday is Kang. How popular is Kang? How much do you know about Kang Mo? Or do you think that he's worth going for because he's going to be in the upcoming movies? Yeah, well, Kang's a big part of the the upcoming stuff with the MCU, right? I, um, I do know that his comic is worth quite a bit. I think his comic's worth more on VV because people paid a lot more for it during the bot the exploitation. Yep. I don't really know if you can really look at that comic and be like, well, Kang is super popular because that comic is going for a lot of money. I just think that's the way that the market was at the time, and people don't want to take that type of loss, and I get it. Um, as far as the drop, I mean, I think it'll probably do better than maybe most drops recently. I mean, what the hell have we had that's really even gone over retail? Nothing, really. Lambos, they're still over retail, barely. The Uncommon's barely. like at, at 89 or 80, something like that. But it was, retail was 70, so it's still above it. I expect the King drop, since it's two rarities, to be just like the America Chavez drop, where it's like the ultra rare is animated and the secret rare is not animated, but there's only like 500 editions. And if so, that one's probably going to be like 50 gems retail. And uh, the ultra rare will probably go under retail, even though it's animated. I don't know. That's my prediction anyway what do you think mo i like that i think that's uh pretty accurate sound about right yep that's what i'm expecting on on kang though all the uh, marvel guys like him though he's going to be the next big villain is what they're always saying all right let's check out to see which horses are in this next race the crown prep series race number seven we got another sloppy track but this one's only six furlongs so it's going to be a sprint and uh, the, we got one bet, and it's on the 13 horse, and it's a whole lot of money. They got 200K on, uh, let's see who it is, Gummy Groom. Keep that in mind. All right, we got Pay the Piper from YSM Racing Club. Serious Business from Amazog. Stay, I'm going with Amazog now. Amazing? I don't know. The AMA Stable. We got Cisco from Golden Stables. Where's the Truth from Poverty Ranch. Triple Novia from Poverty Ranch. Times Like Novia from Poverty Ranch. You got Lorco from Golden Stables. Random, I am from a Poverty Ranch. Fantasia's Novia from Poverty Ranch. Got a lot of Poverty Ranch horses in this one. Finnodiri is how I sounded that out. YSM Racing Club. Joel Madden Football from Tutbury Stud. We got Sink from Golden Stables. Gummy Groom, that's your favorites from Savage Stables. Vindela's from Golden Stables. Ptolemy, that's a big horse. I always see that one. I think it was in the Derby last uh, week from about the Czar Mangers. No Cigar from Poverty Ranch. Face Down Avalanche from Poverty Ranch. Goal Choi from YSM Racing Club. Spartan from Golden Stables. And Koku from Golden Stables. That's your lineup, folks, for the Crown Prep Series ra uh, Round 7. I believe is what the R7 stands for. 20 horses. It's a, it's a heavy field. Heavy field. So what you got planned for tonight, Mo, after you get done calling these races? Shit, my name's hanging out the window. Um, well, the girlfriend will be happy because we'll be done early and we'll just hang out, get some dinner, catch up on some shows. Uh, we have a lot of shows we watch. Like what? I just said you, um, so don't we me, don't tell me Milf Manor because I know she ain't watching that with you. She does not watch Milf Manor with me. Um, she should, but she doesn't. I like uh, that. <laughs> yeah, so we our base, our main shows are like uh, the rookie. It's like a cop show on ABC. Great show. Great cast. Uh, like The Neighborhood. A little comedy show on CBS sitcom. What else do we watch? Uh, Ghost. Yo, Ghost on CBS. If nobody's not with people aren't watching that, that is a great show. What's it about? Ghosts? Uh, young couple takes over a house. It's like part of like a heritage or something. Okay. They turn it into a bed and breakfast, but she falls from the top of the stairs, slams her head on the wall, and then she can see ghosts that live in the house. Oh, of course. And all the people that have died on that property are stuck there in like purgatory. Ooh. Bro, it's really cool, man. It's like it's got some like old colonial type folks. You got Thor the Viking. You know, Thor the Viking, probably like one of the best TV characters in a long time. Guy's great. Um, nice. Yeah, it's got really good reviews. It seems like it's going to be around for a while. It was based on a UK version, and the UK version was pretty successful. So, I don't know. It's a good, like I said, good little sitcom. Um, so do you guys watch it like um, back to back to back on Hulu or Netflix, or do you actually watch an episode and wait a week for the next episode to come out? Uh, depends on the show. We have a few shows that we binge, like uh, usually shows we want to catch up on. So like Once Upon a Time, she's watched it. I never saw it, but and again, I like the Disney stuff, you know, growing up. So I was like, oh, so I watched a couple episodes of Once Upon a Time. I thought it was really good. 
and we just started binging that. So that's like one of them we're running through. But usually, you know, we usually get to sit down twice a week and try to catch up on some shows. So we usually go week by week. I had a girlfriend who tried to get me to watch Once Upon a Time once. I, I denied that request. No, thank you. But I did. I mean, I watched Harry Potter, all those stuff. I mean, I've watched quite a few movies unwillingly. But now when it comes to TV shows, I'm like binge only. I don't want to watch anything where I have to have a cliffhanger that lasts until the next day or the next week. Give me some good old Hulu, some Netflix, where when a cliffhanger happens, I'll watch the first part of the next episode and then I'll cut it off and go to bed. Like, I don't want to be cut on... I don't want to be caught on a cliffhanger. It ain't right. <laughs> yeah, I get that. And again, normally I'm the same way, but you know, with some of these shows, if me and her get in the groove of watching it, you know, we just try to and it try is to a, stay on top of it. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of nice to have that cliffhanger uh, for a, a day or a week or whatever, trying to put your own uh, theories of what's going to happen next. Of course. I guess yeah, I feel like it's more of a uh, maybe like an overarching idea of what's wrong with this world in general like we love watching youtube on 3x speed and binging things and like we want everything now you know what i'm saying like what the hell is this world gonna look like in 10 15 years like it's gonna be nuts everything's gonna be ran by ai at this point that stuff is advancing so fast so i have no idea where it's gonna go it's gonna, it's going fast so i know that for sure i've been warning people <laughs> like a year and a half ago people looking at me like i was nuts laughing me out of the room Oh, yeah. You know, like all these companies that were getting tax breaks and tax write-offs for like, you know, contributing money to AI research and automation. That's exactly what they were doing, man. Trust me. Exactly. You, you think you think just helping people at the checkout counter and like an automated checkout machine was the, was the, the end goal? Oh, hell no. So I'm wondering if that's even going to work out because that's the new thing around here is that the the um, grocery stores and now even the dollar stores and now even the gas stations are putting in the automated things to uh, check yourself out or whatever. But now when I go into this one particular dollar store, they have a big giant sign up now that says that you have to show your receipt before leaving if you do a self cash out. Like, like it's been a problem or something. So I'm wondering, oh, yeah. this, this is just started. Like people are gonna find ways to just sneak stuff around or ways to, I don't even hack the even thing where they can scan a certain barcode and it shows the wrong price i don't know i don't know if this is going to work out the way they think it is i mean it's going to work i mean it's been working here for like a decade now uh and the way to beat that and i've seen every <laughs> brick and mortar store around here start doing this is you know you you put whatever let's say it's 10 10 self-checkout lanes right or you know machines there used to be 10 people you had to pay per hour right sure. and now they just have all 10 machines and there'll always be like one you know, usually some 20 something year old employee swiping on their phone, but there's always someone there like standing there is like the, the watcher, you know, right, yeah. and usually that's enough to deter people from just walking up. Because trust me, my cousin used to do it. Uh, I, I used to do it a little bit, I guess. Like you walk up and it's like you just grab something that's got, you know, it's 25 cents. And you just walk up and scan it, you know, throw it in. Right. But, you know, some of the machines have weights. It'll, it'll know the weight of an item. So if you that's scan true. it. You actually have to scan it, put it down in the bag, and, you know, if it doesn't detect the weight in a certain amount of time, the freaking light goes off like you won the lottery and someone comes running over. So it's you just know, getting it's... more and more complex so that they can prevent from hiring regular old people who probably need jobs. But, of course, once you put everybody out of work, then you're going to have to have, like, some type of national income or something. Then it gets crazy as well. All right, guys, it's time for the next grade one race. Good luck if you're in this one. Yeah, well, because my girlfriend's sitting behind me, I'm not going to talk about a... Uh... A type of income plan, the social the social plan that people want to roll with. <laughs> She's already giving me a look. Never mind, I'm going to shut up. All right. I'm still alive, ladies and gentlemen. And they're off here in the Crown Prep series. And it's Lurko from Between Horses with Serious Business on the Rail. And it's Fantasies, Novia, and Findery with Vendela now run up in the lane of fifth and Joel Madden football in sixth here early on. As I have indigestion and the horses have head out to shoot and onto the main track. Opening quarter in 23 and change and it's Fantasies, Novia. Fantasies, Novia is all by her lonesome as now right on cue being joined by Findery as these two lead the charge with the cavalry not too far behind. And a break of two back on the outside. That's Lorco, who starts to get going here along with Gummy Groom. 
and it's Joel Madden football starts to advance from the back of the pack if room is necessary or available even. And then where is the truth? But they're all chasing fantasies Novia from start to finish. And now, finally, it's Findery. Findery goes right on by as fantasy Novia starts to fade here down at the rail. And down the center of the track, don't look, it's coming. It's going to be Gummy Groom, but not going to find enough time. And I can't even spit out the words. Thank God. Oh, my Lord. Gummy Groom did get him on the outside over Findery and Fantasy's Novia. What the hell was that? Wow, it looked like the camera even zoomed into the other horse, thinking that the other horse had won, but no, Gummy Groom comes up with the win. Let's see what the uh, the splits were. Uh, let's see. Oh, does it going to show us our time? Yeah, 108.894. 108.894. Exact same time for both of them, but they give it to Gummy Groom, and Gummy Groom was the favorite. The only horse that had a bet on it gets the win there. Somebody got rugged. Shout out to Fully. Happy last beta day. Thank you for hanging out with us, Fully. Yeah, this is the last day of beta version 2. Then we're going to beta version 3, and it's about to get wild because it's going to be real money racing only. And I have to keep in mind that apparently the races are not starting up automatically from the front page like they usually do. So I'll, I'll remember that for the next one, hopefully. All right, are you on the main page or the racing tab? Uh, well, I usually I go to the main page. I click on Photo Finish Live, the actual... Um, logo and then i full screen that one that says up next oh okay yeah that i don't know if there works, is a difference but yeah I, yeah I use a race tab i don't know if there is a difference actually on that i'm not sure either all right i do, I do know it resets the feed when i switch between the two so it could make make a difference so. all right i might try this one this time if i'm on that page all right i got a horse in this one quantum mania and i also have lost in the fog in this race and you're going to see lots of S's and S pluses. Lambo's in this race. Valley Happy. True Stoner's in it. Uh, Solonaut's in it. Pocono. Secretariat. Golden Stables. La Playa. Alejandro's in here. Encourageable Goats got one. Valley Happy got one. And, of course, Poverty Ranch is in here. So this one's uh, stock full of horses. Are you racing any of your horses tonight, Mo? You know, I'm not. Uh, I do. I have so much going on right now. Like I said, I just... I'm actually kind of glad it's going to shut down for a few days because I need to reset of the brain but uh yeah i've just been kind of just been kind of focusing on some other stuff and really trying to just work on the race calls and get better at that you know because again I, I try to keep it realistic i know exactly my horses are not you know cut out to run against the tony rigatoni families of the world so but i am looking forward to the reset i will be racing my head well i don't have that much money i'll be racing as much as i can let's put it that way <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be a whole different game with the reset because you're not going to have the uh, horses that got to breed with Tony Rigatoni with free money. So it's going to be a whole different game. Yeah, I was telling you, uh, I was, I know you were in my Discord server earlier, er, and I was talking about what happened to me this week, which is kind of a, a goofy story. And since we got plenty of time, I guess I'll tell the story here as well. Is that, Yeah, I wasn't sure if you wanted to discuss it. That's why I was like, I'll let you bring it up. Oh, no, I don't mind. It's, I mean, it just kind of makes me look dumb, but not really. I mean, kind of. How often do you guys look at your license plate to see if they're expired? Because I never look. And I was thinking about it the other day about how I'd never look. And so I looked, and the sticker said uh, February of 2020 was when I was supposed to get the last sticker. So it had been like three years, and I never got pulled over once that whole entire time. And I was like, all right, well, I never got pulled over, so I'll just wait until my next paycheck. And then as soon as I started driving after that, as soon as I noticed it, it was like I couldn't drive without being nervous that there was going to be a cop pulling up behind me and pulling me over. So I had to, like, stop everything and make sure that I had went and got my registration. But then you had to pay your tow bridge. If you guys have a tow bridge where you live, I have a tow bridge to go to Louisville. And it's, I don't even know how much it is, like four or five bucks. And if you just go over there and you don't pay it, they start racking on extra fees or whatever. So that was like an extra couple hundred bucks that you had to pay to get that. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess once I went three years without ever getting pulled over or anybody noticing it, not even like any friends or family mentioning it to me. So I really shouldn't have stressed about it. But as soon as I noticed it, it was like a game changer for me. I had to uh, drop everything and get it fixed. That's crazy, dude. You know, it's you said like who the hell looks at their license plates, right? So for us, it's different because that's like your registration, right? For us, it's on in our windshield. I know most other states don't do that. They find it like obtrusive. Well, I know you guys have to put your license plate on the front and the back, right? Don't you get two license plates? Correct. And we also have like a registration uh, like oh. sticker that goes in the bottom left hand corner of the front windshield, oh. you know, behind the steering wheel. Yeah, we don't and then like, yeah, no, I know most like I said, most uh, other states don't. They do like stickers on the license plates and stuff like that. 
And it's even crazier for us here in New York, like what your situation could actually never happen to me. Just because all sorts of things would happen, like between the amount of letters I would get, my insurance letting me know that it's about to be, you know, uh, lapsed or whatever for not, not having my car registered. My There's all sorts of reasons anything. why, like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, my insurance doesn't tell me anything. I always have, like, crazy luck with stuff like that, bad luck with it. The one time that I went to Canada, I didn't have my driver's license on me. I just had a regular ID, and I was with a couple of friends, and they were just fine. But just because I didn't have a driver's license, they pulled me over and uh, made me go through, like, a two-hour process of verifying who I am just to allow me into Canada. Like, who's trying to get into Canada illegally? What am I doing to, in Canada? The only reason I was there is because uh, in Canada, when you're 19, you can actually drink and gamble. You don't have to be 21, you don't have to be 19. So we went there for a spring break one time. But we got stuck up at the border just because uh, my driver's license wasn't perfectly as everybody else's. You ever been to Canada, Mo? I uh, have not, but I'd like to go. Seems like a cool place. You ever been out of the country at all? No, 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 no. Man, you're close to Canada. New York is probably, what, a couple of hours away. Yeah, I mean, the closest I probably <clears throat> got there is I had my license, speaking of stuff like that, my license expired when I was in California working on the West Coast for a while. And I could not get, like, the the proof of residence because of how often I was moving around from like the different areas of Northern California. Oh yeah. I could not get my ID in California. So anyway, something's happened. I had to get back home and I couldn't fly cause I had no license. Oh, no. So I had to take, I had to take Amtrak and I wound up taking like some crazy it's called like the twilight something. And it's like the main Northern route Amtrak that runs across the country. And man, that was, that was one of the coolest things I've ever done. That was, that was a lot of fun. It was fine. Did it take like several days? Because I know driving there would take like three days. Yeah, it took like four and a half days. But like as soon as I got on the train, um, you know, it's like all these different carts. Like you have like, your sleeping carts and your regular carts and you have like a like a bar cart. So I was just like, kind of wandering around looking for places and seeing if I could like smoke cigarettes in between the train cars while I was moving like we do here in New York. But that wasn't possible. And uh, I found some dude and he's like, hey, man, want a drink? <laughs> and it turned out to be some freaking rich dude oh, nice. and he just was buying me drinks for like days every day just freaking hanging out in the bar cart till he got off at his stop and then like it takes there was like a layover in chicago and then we got drunk there and then we i took the train back from there to new york and uh yeah that was it was like four and a half days i think all, all said and done Whew, i don't know if i could take a four and a half day train ride but i guess if i had some rich guy feeding me drinks the whole time that would make it pretty fun i don't know it sounds like a pretty fun adventure actually Nice, nice. Yeah, it was cool. Like I said, uh, you know, that's just so many random people. You know, like, I dude, I, I mean, I'm an asshole. Most people tell you I'm an asshole, but like, I love a good conversation with someone new. If they got some interesting shit to talk about. Like, I love it. I, I live for that. You know, so just meeting people from all different walks of life and whatever, and you know. Yeah, I wish I was better at that. I don't know. I'm, I'm not good at talking to strangers. Just striking up conversations. I have a uh, that's. That's my other side of the family. My mom and my sister, they do it like all the time, like annoyingly too much. Like if I get into an elevator with my sister and there's somebody in the elevator, she's going to start talking to them and about their day and stuff, and which is embarrassing to me. But in a way, I kind of feel like I wish I could be more like you to where I could strike up conversations with people like that. Yeah, I, mean, I prefer a little more of like a relaxed, intimate environment. I'm not the dude that's going to walk in an elevator and be like, no, I bet you wonder why I'm, uh, I called you here today, you know, and just start, like, chatting everybody up. <laughs> that's but, my sister right there. Dennis O'Connor I mean, says, you know. Any tips for getting KY seat on DC Palm? Tried twice and failed both times. Valid driver's license and a credit card. Um, let's see. I don't remember what the process, process was with uh, Palm, DC Palm. I know with Vivi, I remember that process because I had pro problems getting KYC. With DC Palm, though, it was the first time and it went straight through. I think what I've been using, I learned from Vivi, is instead of using like a picture of uh, something with your, like your driver's license or something with your address on it, use a PDF file, like um, your bank statement or a utility statement that you get from their website. And then that's easier for the verifiers to read a PDF file than it is to see somebody's picture that they you know snapped with a camera or something mo do you have any insight on getting kyc for dc palm do you remember getting kyc yourself i don't i'm actually i was trying to think because because you are right like if you have the pdf like i know a lot of people take screenshots of like the utility bill 
You just go on and like download it from the web, and it's like a perfectly clean copy and legible copy that you can read. Yeah, they might not um, let you do that on there. It says government ID and selfie. Also, I know one thing is that I have to take a selfie anytime I cash out with Vivi. And if I try to take a selfie with my webcam to cash out, never works. Even though I have a nice webcam, never ever works. But if you switch to your phone, first time you take your picture with your phone, uh, the selfie with your phone, it works. So maybe if you're doing it with your webcam, maybe I know there's an option they give you that says switch to phone. And you might be able to take it with mm. your phone. I have to scan ID. Ooh, yeah, you might have to use well, like, an actual old school scanner. Are you trying to scan it with the camera that I see on YouTube? Well, huh? Like the same camera that you use for streaming? That's the one you're trying to scan it on? I was the first time you had to do my facial recognition. Yeah, I could totally figure out why that wouldn't work. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> Your lighting is kind of blown out sometimes. Looks like you're well, sitting on trying, the sun. I was trying different stuff. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's a green screen, so you got to have good lighting. I know. No, I know. I know. Trust me. There's a, there's a reason why I'm a freaking digital skeleton, bro. Like, trust me. I go. have green screen. I was going to paint my shit. I've, I've had all sorts of ways over the years of trying not to have messed up lighting. I actually, I'll send you the link, though. I do actually have some really good umbrella lights that I, that I purchased, oh, nice. and they actually are really, really clean with a green screen, but I can send you the link. They were cheap, too. Yeah, I just have this ring light I've had for a while now. Yeah, it did. and web, darn. I don't know why. I don't know why that wouldn't work for you. Well, I like the uh, background. If you guys haven't noticed Moe's background, he's at the racetrack, but he's also at the racetrack that's in Gotham. You see that in the background? He's got Gotham in the background. Try better oh, lighting. Oh, yeah. Who, me? I thought the lighting looks great. Is the lighting not good right now? No, I'm not saying it's bad lighting. I'm just saying compared to what it's looking for for like a facial scan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Lighting. It's just kind of, it's bright. It's like it's, it, the camera's trying to adjust so much that I just think it can't, it can't react. That's why the phone, you know, the phone cameras are so much more sophisticated than uh, these webcams. So that's true. I should start streaming with my phone. I should set it up to where the phone is my camera because it's probably even better than my webcam. Honestly. Yeah. So I didn't mean to say like it was like it was trash. I just meant like probably compared right. to the phone, like you know, what I'm saying like look at yourself on the webcam self selfie cam. It's yeah, it's just like way more blown out with the lighting, like way brighter. Gotcha. I know it was uh, yesterday. The lighting got really bad during the stream. I don't know what happened. I got like, I did look like I was streaming from the sun. Yeah, try better lighting. Lighting might help. If you, uh, I'll, they always say natural lighting is the best. Go outside. I don't know if you, you got something that's connected to uh, well, your computer or something, but usually natural lighting is always the best, right? Yeah, and it's funny, right? Because I helped my buddy set up his uh, streaming setup a while back, a few years ago, and he would always stream at night, right? But then schedules change and he started streaming in the afternoon and he just wasn't even paying attention. And I'm like, bro, have you even looked at your stream? <laughs> because the, the, now the natural light was coming in with the, the ring light and the umbrella lights. And like, dude, everything was artifacting because, you know, it changes the color of the chroma key green. Yep. And that's what I was going to say before. Like if anybody in chat has ever tried to chroma key yourself on a camera, you can see that, you know, vault looks good. You know, all things considered, like I said, it's a, the lighting is definitely bright. But, I mean, it's not, like, all weird around the edges. Like, you are you are crisp as far as, like, cut out from the green screen. So, yeah. it, it's kind of what you have to do, unfortunately. But sometimes it goes really blurry for some reason. I don't know. I guess, I don't know why. Even when I go off screen and come back, sometimes I get so blurry and it will not go away until you reset the, fun, uh, the camera. All right, guys, it's time for the next race. We got another grade one race starting in 10 seconds. Good luck if you're in this one. Here we go. at the track for another race here. It's a major race. They're all major races. 20 horse field. Mm -hmm. And they're off. Awkward start there for Lotus Blossom. But tell her no no got out the better of it. And then comes Who Shot Ya? Back in third, that's Flying Goat who runs in front of Sticking Him Eye down at the rail. And it's Movie Star in the white Bentley. Around out the top six here as they charge past the clubhouse for the first time. And head to the wire. Wave to your current leader. It's Balzar, Manga Runner, Telling Oh No. And it's Telling Oh No with Sticking In My Eye. As Sticking In My Eye now takes the terror lead. Sticking In My Eye now by two over Telling Oh No. Then comes the white 
Bentley about three lengths off as she passes on the outside with a sweeping move here early on. We're three down at the rail, but stick it in my eye. Tell no no and who shot you as these three lead the way. Break of two, that's all town is mystery now, who starts to advance from the back of the pack in between horses and the white Bentley is still on outside. Mystery Guapo is the new name here, but just like that, they're off the board, and it's now the Pretender. As the Pretender and Oat make it Mystery Guapo, these two are going back and forth, battling it out. And we make our way to the far turn with three quarters in the books, 112, and it's telling Oat no, who's no, starting to get away as she leads by four over Who Shot Ya? And Who Shot Ya might have called it a day as Mystery Guapo and Pretender start to take charge on the outside. But back to the front now, it's Tell No No into the final home stretch. And Tell No No's trying to hold on, but the White Bentley, the White Bentley now has the lead as we make our way into the final hundred. And these cameras are real close tonight as we end V2, but it's Flying Goat up the middle. And it's going to be Flying Goat over White Bentley and Zoltana's Mystery. Shout out to Pocono and GVT Racing gets the win with Flying Goat and the White Bentley takes second from Valley Happy. I don't know where my horses were at all. I think I had like three horses in that race. I didn't see them on the leaderboard one time. Let's see where they ended <laughs> up. I think I had horses in that race. Maybe I didn't. Oh, wow. 17th, 18th. Yeah, 17th and 18th. And these are a couple of my best horses too. It's tough out there tonight, guys. It's not going to be like last night. The, the competition. These are all grade one races. Don't expect to get too many wins, y'all. What's up, Froey? Coming in the house. Just joining in, working today, and tuning in while I do some paperwork. Thanks for hanging out with us, Fro. We actually have 15 minutes between each race. So we have been talking about a whole lot of nothing. But if you want to listen to us talk about a whole lot of nothing, we're probably <laughs> going to talk about a whole lot more, to be honest. All right, let's get everything set up for the next race. Uh, like I said, I think I'm in the rest of these races tonight. I put horses in. But your horses got to get picked by the selection committee. Only 20 horses get to race. Lots of S pluses in this one. I got awkward eye contact in here. And Mo don't even know is racing. Probably one of my favorite horses because she's a winner. And I'm hoping she pulls this one off. I'm even going to put a thousand of my derby uh, on a wager for Mo don't even know. Do we get to keep any of this derby? Um, currency that we have right now whenever we switch over to version 3 or I guess it won't matter because it's fake money right yeah no everything's going to reset like I said if you have any USDC left in the account um, that will convert over to derby gotcha yeah no, I got like 4 bucks and 5 cents biggest bro says am I still going for the Mona Lisa nah I can't do the Mona Lisa I mean I thought about it it makes sense in a way but in a way it don't make sense because it's in public domain and there's already what's up by the way for what call me sir I'm sorry what Oh, no, yeah, I, I just saw Kobe's message just saying what's up, man. Have you been listening yeah, to Yeah, can you, uh, can you fill me on the Mona Lisa? I started looking into it last night, and it was showing me, like, UK dollars on some weird-ass site. Like, what the? What is this? Did he just call pounds UK dollars, y'all? Yeah. Pounds? Uh, I don't know, dude. I'm so... <laughs> whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I would have to find it through Twitter and try to remember the name of their company, and which I can't. Elmon X is the name of the Elmon company. Elmon X, yeah. And it used to be Vtel, and that's what's kind of weird to me is that they keep changing their name. And now they're like tweeting about joining a kid called Beast today, which I also thought was like okay, that's kind of weird for people that are selling Da Vinci stuff. I don't know, maybe that's not weird. And Patrick Hughes stuff. I know they did Patrick Hughes from. Um, when they were Vtel and Patrick Hughes is a very famous artist who has NFTs on Vivi, but the yeah, Leonardo da Vinci that. Mona Lisa one that's not on Vivi, that's on their own platform. And I know that my collectibles already has NFTs before this drop on their platform that gives him early access. But also there was a problem with their early access where I don't know if they got hacked or somebody got all of them, but there was some kind of weird problem that went on during the early access. So I'm kind of worried about that when it comes to the public drop. Seinfeld made a fortune off nothing. Hey, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, Elmon X. Thank you, yep. bro. So, yeah, there's uh, two different versions. There's the regular version with 330 uh, editions at 150 pounds. So I think that's about 200 bucks. Could be wrong. Uh, I yeah. can look up the conversion rate. And then the other one is number to 10. They reserved three for the early access, so there should be seven during the public drop. Nine hundred pounds is maybe twelve or thirteen hundred bucks. What's up, Simon? I was like the, is that like the artist proof or something. Yep, that's the artist proof. They're numbered on the back one through ten. Yeah, the artist proof. I don't know. What do you think about them? What up, Quilly? Yeah, man. I don't. I don't know, dude. 
I, I don't know. I, you know, the art, the art is always going to be collectible to a certain extent of like, you know, the same way if you ever played like Final Fantasy online where you can like build your own little, you know, social house and have people come over and stuff like that. I just don't know like the value of some of these things with, as far as like, you know, priceless artifacts of history. Like, are they going to pay that much to put it up in their house? Probably not. I think we're going to move to a point where you're just going to be able to like take a picture of whatever you want. I know, like right click and save it, right? Haha. <laughs> but you're pretty much going to be able to do that and put it up in your little metaverse house. You know what I'm saying? But if you want to be like, hey, I own the NFT, you know, you could do that too. And then you can like, you know, actually own it. Because, you know, like when you walk up to things in spatial and people view your galleries, you know, when you hover over it or look at it, you know, it'll show you like everything, all the information on the blockchain, let you interact with it and it'll show you all the data. So they'll still have that. But people will be able to just take a screenshot of the Mona Lisa and put up in their freaking virtual house. And to them, they're not going to care, you know, to the, you know, to the people that are like, Ooh, I'm hunting serial numbers and this and that. Like, yeah, they're probably gonna care, but I don't know, man. I just have a hard time buying into all this. I I'm with you on the vehicles. I think vehicles are, well, speculative. I think they could be very, very valuable, especially you know if it comes down to it. Where like my girlfriend goes down to Disney with her folks or whatever, and you know we got some Harry Potter related stuff or Star Wars related stuff, and she's like, hey. You know, if I had this Darth Vader NFT, we get, like, special access or, like, you know, if you own certain NFTs and you're walking through the ride or the attraction, it's going to get to the point with the, you know, the, the technology of, like, detection, what's in, like, the radius and all that. Right. Uh, it's going to know, like, who's in the area, who's going through the ride, and based on what you have in your VV Wild in your pocket, you know, different things might happen on that attraction. If you own, like, a secret rare version of Darth Vader, maybe, like, you know... He comes up and like takes a swipe at you or something. Dude, but if you have the common, so awesome. he's just like, you know, if you own the common, he'll just look at you and be like, what's up? You know, he's really not really going to interact. Yeah. So. And then people and, could rent it from you just to go on the ride real quick. Like, I'll exactly. give you five bucks back. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But uh, on this Mona Lisa, while you were talking, I was looking up a little bit of information on other Mona Lisa NFTs. I mean, there's the very, what's called the very first Mona Lisa NFT already on OpenSea, Mona Lisa painting NFT. And then there's another one mm -hmm. on crypto.com, which is hilarious because it says, this piece is approved by the Louvre. So they misspelled approved, but apparently it's approved by the Louvre. And there's, it says there's only one, but there's 10 editions. So I don't know, man. I, don't, I feel like uh, it's public domain, so I can't bring myself to, to go after that drop. Yeah, and you know, it also kind of leads us back to, um, I forgot who was it. Was it Kobe Collects? I like to, I like to chime in with him periodically. Mm -hmm. He's a level-headed dude. And, you know, it's like people... No, actually, it might have been Tony. It might have been Tony the... Tony Omi, whatever his name is. Um, Tony, get the Omi. Crypto, crypt, crypt Tony, rather. Oh, crypt Tony. Tony, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so... I, I forgot what, what started the conversation or whatever, but, like, people cry and beg for interoperability and stuff like that, but... Man, you know, people can be real upset when they get that NFT comic and they slap it on OpenSea or whatever, and it's just a flat image you can't do nothing with. Oh, yeah, I did you know. see you say that on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. It will be just a flat image, just like the 3D collectibles will just be an image of that collectible, and it won't be 3D except for only in the VVverse or on the VV app. Unless, I don't know, new technology arrives, so maybe maybe they'll come up with some type of interoperability where, uh, I mean, are there 3D and spatial? Would they be 3D and spatial? Well, that, that it all depends. Like I said, so Solana... When, I, when I've minted NFTs on Solana, you're updating, you're uploading the 3D model the same way you do on when I do on OpenSea, right? Right. And, you know, for whatever reason, it sends, like, the preview image with the metadata for the NFT through Spatial when you link your Phantom Wallet. It doesn't actually link or tie into the actual 3D asset. And it's so dumb. Don't know why, you know, Solana does it that way, but, yeah, that's just how it is. So it really depends, I guess, on what metadata they pass along. Could it be fixed down the road? I'm sure. It just seems weird to me that it's been an issue on spatial for like a long time <laughs> and and if vv did it right nothing. now on OpenSea, they'd probably be 2d images simon doe says the vv 500 is on monday i didn't know it was on monday i'm i think it's just like a movie it's like not just a video but like a cinema style movie like this dude's like a professional producer so it should be fun to watch but uh, i mean i don't it's not super excited about it what about you mo are you excited about the vv 500 
not not at all but i will say this because i do respect all that type of talent like you just said man like that is super creative if not something that i normally sit down to watch but it's also kind of sad that like that's our biggest utility with these with all these items and all these things that we own it's like you can put them in a vault you have to still you know finagle things and do all these crazy sorts of things just to make a video whereas like it would be cool if you could just jump into the vb verse you know, boom, hit the record button, spin around, 360 panoramic. You know, you want to export things for your OBS, right? So it's like, boom, you can easily just take it, export the object, you know, with a green screen behind it, with a green screen, you know, green uh, background. Right. And, like, you're good to go. Right. You know, but they just make you jump through so many hoops, man. But that being said, it's a long-winded answer of, I don't plan on watching. Well, I will, well, maybe I'll check it out, but I don't know. It's... I'll check it out, but I'm, I'm upset the Aston Martin's not in there. That should be not only in there, the winner. Pro yeah. Company says, will I be live be streaming featured. tomorrow? I'll probably live stream that drop. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go for it on the drop, though. 25 gems is not very expensive, and they do look cool, but I don't know if they're going to tell even the most rare one. So what's the point of going for it? Cleese says, about feeling well now? I've not been feeling sick for a long time. I don't get sick very often. The only time I've been sick recently is I got the Rona twice. In the last couple years that's that's the only time i ever get sick i've actually never broken a bone knock on wood and i've only gotten stitches twice one time on my elbow from playing football and one time on the bridge of my nose from playing basketball a guy with glasses like hit me with his nose or dead on purpose but he was like jerking back and it hit the bridge of my nose but i say I, I really have been lucky to not get many injuries or sicknesses what about you mo have you ever broke any bones I've never broken a bone, and I've I've done triple backflips out of trees, fifteen feet in the air, landed on my neck. My dad thought I was gonna die. He's like, you just he's like, you just got up. He was like, I was freaking shocked. Uh, I went face first to a car windshield. Uh, all I did was tear a muscle on my back and my shoulder. No broken bones. Walked away from that. Uh, yeah, I'm like the dude. I'm like a <laughs> unbreakable. The movie Unbreakable. That's a great movie. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, no, never broken a bone. Uh, tons of stitches. I've cracked my head open multiple times. Ouch. Uh, I got in a fight when I was tripping on mushrooms. <laughs> Ow. Big six four dude, and like he was talking smack, and then like you know, dude who had, was having the party was like, "Yo, I'm not here. We broke it up." And as I turned my back, bro, and I get I was tripping. This dude just came and bum rushed me, and he's like six four, bro. And he grabbed me and launched me up in the air. And I could have sworn I put my hands down to, like, break my fall. But, again, I was tripping. <laughs> and, yeah, I went face first, bro, and I was messed up. My, I busted my chin open, dude. It was crazy. Uh, I'm sitting in the freaking emergency room. Like, they get to try to stitch me up. And I'm like, yo, can I let him smoke? <laughs> I was like, I got to get out of here, man. It was, oh, it was crazy. Yeah, I, all sorts of crazy things. Never never broke a bone, though. Um, yeah, knock on wood. Yeah, that's got to be the worst time to get injured, though, yeah. tripping on mushrooms. I don't even know. Whew. I'd be paranoid going into the uh, hospital. Did you tell them you were on mushrooms? Because you kind of have to, right? So they know what medicine. Uh, I, no? I don't know. I don't think I told them. Uh, they didn't notice your eyes were dilated or nothing? I guess not. Oh, it's New York. I guess that happens all the time in New York. My bad. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, everyone was pretty rowdy that I was with. It probably just seemed like a like a festive group. But, uh, you know. Froze right. We're probably also, what probably also read like weed. You forgot the first rule of, not, of Fight Club. Not supposed to talk about Fight Club, bro. Man, uh, this was no Fight Club. This was the end result of people <laughs> running their mouths trying to get me club. involved in things, you know. And uh, you no, know. you're not missing out, Quilly. All right, guys, it is race time. Good luck if you're in it. Yeah, I wouldn't say you're missing out either, but there's a large community that says you are. With this whole microdosing. So we can discuss coming up here on Saturday Night the Races, final night of version two, at least. <laughs> All right, they are in the gate and they're rolling here in the Crown Prep Series, race nine. And it's running man, Arnold himself runs out to the lead. And then it's special effort on the outside with simple twist of fate down at the rail. And a break of four comes the pack of Crime Wave, Callow, and Theoretical Widow as they round out the top of six here. As they make their way around the opening turn, 12 furlong right turning a fair in the dirt. Track is good, smoke is better. Opening quarter in 24 and change, and it's simple twist of fate. 
who runs along here in the early going. And on the far outside, that's a special effort not to be outdone here. Says, don't forget about me from the 18 hole. And now runs out to the lead as the camera shifts out to tell us just that. Then back down the rail, a simple twist of fate, who runs along in second. Crime wave from between horses with theoretical window. Back down the rail, that comes a running man who starts to fade as whole lot of Rosie and Morgana now have passed that challenger. Back to the front opening half in 49 chains, a simple twist of fate. Starts to kick clear here from the competition and opens up by three, three and a half. And special effort is the closest one to catch him here. And on a break of two, that's Crime Wave. Now Snowbird, the new runner here on the board, moves up here into third. Make it, oh, make it fourth. That's theoretical window now, cuts him off. But simple twist of fate, making it look easy here, folks, on the back stretch. And here we go, making our way down the back stretch one more time in this great one affair. But simple twist of fate is not making it easy here on the announcer, as we have very little discuss, not much movement here. But simple twist of fate will continue to run its course, and special effort and Snowbird will continue to do nothing as well, so I have nothing to talk about. Theoretical window, however, will continue to be passed by Awkward Eye Contact. And there we go. There's something to talk about as Awkward Eye Contact is the new runner here showing their face, making Awkward Eye Contact passing challengers as we speak. Opening quarter, one mile and a quarter, rather, as we hit the home stretch. Simple twist of fate has been running this thing to the wire, but can it sustain? Snowbird on the outside, on the center of the track. Callow now pulls off the rail to take a shot at the leader, but it's simple twist of fate down at the rail with Snowbird, and to the wire, it's going to be Snowbird. Snowbird tweet tweets over simple twist of fate and Callow. Shout out to La Playa Farms gets the victory here on the final day of racing for beta version 2 with the Snowbird. I saw Awkward Eye Contact making a run there at the end. That is a horse that I like to run at 12 furlongs, so I did expect her to do well. Uh, where'd my other horse go? Where was uh, Mo Don't Even Know? Yeah, 10th place. Mo Don't Even Know distance races. I run that horse at 7 and 8, but I had to get her in a race tonight. That was a good race. Too many horses. That's going to be all the races tonight. All the races tonight have 20 horses each. They're all grade one. They're all 15 minutes in between races. I don't know. Somebody up here said I missed a race. I did not miss a race. I don't, they're all fit between. Um, they're all 15 minutes in between. So definitely didn't miss any. And then the last race of the night is going to be the third time derby. It's going to be the last race of beta version two altogether. And is there a particular date yet set for the first day of racing for beta version three, Mo? Um, I think. According to the game plan from Discord, they said shut shut everything down Monday, shut it down, man. They're going to upgrade on Tuesday, try to get it back online for Wednesday. Um, but that could be tentative. And if you look at the schedule, at least when I looked it up anyway, uh, it went from a gap from the third time derby to March 4th, which would actually put us at Saturday. Now, however, yeah, it's all tentative. I mean those races aren't even going to be the same races that are generated for version three because gotcha. they're going to pull everything down and, you know, reboot the system. So, sure. you know, that's just a tentative date, but it says March 4th, um, take it for a grain of salt. And yeah, so I would assume Wednesday, maybe Thursday, the latest, uh, cause I would imagine they want to get it back up for the Thursday stream that they do with the, uh, with Ian and the guys. Sure. Nice. All right. Yeah. So we'll be racing next weekend, hopefully Friday and Saturday. It's the last day for most of your horses that are in your stable right now, unless you actually own the ticket for that horse uh, on the Solana blockchain. So the only two horses I'll be keeping is Swamp Thing, which is down here at the bottom somewhere. Swamp Thing is one of my horses, my male horse. Uh, where There he is. And then I have another horse, a female horse, that I never did redeem the ticket to. I'll be redeeming that ticket as soon as beta version 3 starts. And I think she is also an A-, minus, but has different preferences than Swamp Thing. But there's not, not going to be any breeding in version 3. It's only going to be one season long, so no breeding, none of that stuff, just racing only. And yeah, so and you know, it's... You know, one of the good things for us, at least, I know it's kind of being like, well, I got used to running S horses or S pluses or whatever. Now I'm going back to an A minus. But like I said, I think, you know, you, you'll probably be pleasantly surprised, I think, with how decently, you know, if you pick the right races, at least, how maybe you'll know, be able to compete uh, in the races. They did also mention, I think, something about some races being limited to uh, to grades only. So that'll be kind of cool. 
kind of like to do with that big race in November where it was like A plus it had to be like an A to A plus A minus to A plus rather. Oh really? I didn't you know, know. I did that. That sounds cool. Yeah, not every race, you know, it's not gonna be like that the whole system, but they might just do it periodically. We're like, hey, you know, tired of worrying about the B plus horses. Well, hey, lucky for you, we've got the B plus only race coming up. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, handicap whatever. races kind of do that too. Well, they do, but they they still allow any horse to enter. They just try to level the playing field as best as they can. Right, gotcha. You know, but we still see horses carrying seven pounds. If they're just that damn good, you know, they're going to run. Yep. But I, I think you'll you'll be better than you think you will be. And like I said, man, one good breed up, you know, which is another good reason why it's like, hey, not many people doing what we do, right? People come through the races. We've met people, right? So people in chat... Who knows? You know, the, the fact that we're all quote unquote early, you know, we might be able to help each other out and get some good breeds going early on. And when the masses come in, you won't be dealing with the A's and the A minuses. You'll have like a, an S minus that you're able to breed up from somebody like with one or two breeds, you know? So Plus you'll understand how to race your horses better, what races to put them in, what races to bet on and how to breed your horses better because you were here early and we learn all this stuff by playing for all this time so that's definitely going to come in handy uh let me go through and sh name off all the horses in this upcoming race we got another grade one another soft track and this time it's a five furlong race so it's going to be a sprint we got space bonanza from golden stables my horse is hot sauce hot sauce is in this race we got lunga distanza from wimbledon and gbt turf alfie boom from valley happy Sarah Cielo from Wimbledon and GBT Turf, Hypnotic from Big Brain Stables, Jean Vibes or Jean, probably Jean, Jean Vibes from Wimbledon and GBT Turf, Dark and Sinister from Revere Ranch, Tesla 2 from Valley Happy, Norsey Farm from Ronnie Lito, we got Helen of Troy from Balthazar Manger, Spiky Monk from Alejandro, Porsche Boxer from Valley Happy, I think we, won, we watched Spiky Monk win a race last night, so uh, he's hot right now. Still Ballin is another horse that ran last night and won a race. Three wins and six races. He's from SoCal Stables. She, actually. Back in Black from Secretary at Stables. Mr. Boom from Valley Happy. Serena Starline from Wimbledon and GBT Turf. We got Stinky Shoes from Stinky Feet. And Kobe Collects in the chat. What's up, Kobe Collects? We got H. Theoria from Big Brain Stables and Star Appeal from Wimbledon and GBT Ranch. Shout out to Kobe Collects. Let's go get some horses in here, Kobe. I wonder if you're going to be doing any real money racing in version 3. Genuine says, can you do a YouTube video how to buy a horse in the future? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how it works myself. Uh, we talk about it a lot of times about how to pick out the horse to buy, but it's really going to be interesting to see what those prices look like and if the strategy on what horses to buy changes any whenever we switch to real money only racing. Froey Comey says, I have to run. My broker is having another meeting. Have a good evening, Vault and Mo, and everyone in the chat. Thanks for hanging out, Fro. Appreciate you, bro. And we will see you at tomorrow's live stream if you're going for that Kozik drop. I might go for it. Might as well. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, Mo. It's almost time for the next race. Another five furlong sprint. And then we're going to have another 15 minutes between races. Uh, talk to me, Mo. Give me your five top... <coughs> musician musical artist could be band or just a singer on their own it could be a rapper it could be a yodeler whatever what's our biggest top part? five top uh five. i can give you any particular order because i could probably make arguments for all of them uh guns and roses frank sinatra Ooh, as i'm saying we, we start to get dicey here um frank sinatra is that like a new york thing i just i love i love oldies music man i love crooning and stuff like that i like odie's music too i, I, I couldn't think of one actual frank like Sinatra rat pack song. really I, I mean i like temptations I like that kind of odie's jackie wilson but i mean i know who frank sinatra is but like for movies and stuff i couldn't name any of his song i do like uh tom jones she's a lady it's not just... unusual <laughs> to be lonely. tom jones gets down i did i used to think it was funny but then i started listening to his music and like Tom Jones gets down. He ain't no joke. Jimmy says maybe sell a few BB collectibles to buy a ticket horse. That might be a good plan if, uh, <clears throat> if you are able to cash out. I know some people are having trouble cashing out on BB. I never have trouble cashing out. But um, <clears throat> if you get a decent horse, it's probably going to be able to win races and win you money for, I think, 200 or less if you're picky about it. Personally, just by looking at Racer's Edge over the last few weeks. 
Yeah, yeah, I did also got a Frankie Blue Eyes. All right, so you gave me Frankie. Uh, your first one was uh, Guns N' Roses. Yeah, Take Me Down to the Paradise City. I got a story about that song. But all right, you got another three? Uh, I mean, I'd probably have to put Offspring up there. I'm a huge Offspring fan. Nice. Um, I listen to a lot of obscure music too, man. Um. Uh, part of me always wants to put Metallica in there just because they're a huge part of my of who I am. But Dang, nice it, yeah. again, it, it's that's why I can never really go top. I can always just say that my favorite band of all time is Guns N' Roses, and that will never change. I can always say that. Yeah, yeah, I, I uh, lip synced a Guns N' Roses song in first grade, and we got all the way to like the finals with it. And I was just a little kid. It was Take Down the Paradise City, so I know every word of that song for my whole entire life. Every time I hear it, I'm like, oh, I know this one. But yeah, no, I'm more into, uh, I'm big on, I say if I went with five of them, number one's always Bone Thugs and Harmony for me. That's what I grew up listening to. I know a lot of uh, their songs. And then uh, then I go to like the more of the mellow smoking type stuff maybe, like uh, Sublime and Bob Marley. Those two would be on my top five list. And then where it's where it gets a little dicey, I probably put Temptations in there. Ever since I saw that made for movie, Temptations movie, I don't know if you saw, it's like three hours long. Um, I've seen it a few times. It's such a great movie and it got me into their music which is always fun to listen to. I played it at my wedding reception. And then if I had to come up with a number five, I would have to go with good old Biggie. And I'm surprised you didn't give me a Biggie from New York over there. I got to represent for New York. I do <laughs> not like Biggie. I do what? not like Biggie. Biggie nope. was the what? Biggie nope. was the man. All right, maybe not. Maybe that's just Listen, now, listen, here's the deal. I, I'm not I'm not ever going to say he wasn't talented because he was. He was insanely talented, you know? Um it's just, man, I. Uh, it's not really. Maybe I shouldn't even say this. Um, uh -oh. I have a hard time. Oh, I had a hard time, especially at the time when it all happened, being shocked that Tupac and Biggie wound up dead after everything that happened. I just, it, it, it never. I was like, oh wow, well, I saw that coming. Like, just what was going on in that time frame and where they pushed it, man, to for that whole scene to go the way it did. But I just felt like I felt like it was like the record producers and the media pushing it up, hyping yeah, it up to push they, album sales and stuff. Like they wanted it that because that was popular and it was getting more playtime. People are like, "Oh, what's going on with this?" So they made it even more intense. And uh, I don't, I don't feel like it was a little bit orchestrated, although probably some people. Well, it was didn't orchestrated. Know. No, it 100 percent was orchestrated to a certain degree. But then you had smart people on the back end of it that were like, "Yo, this has gone too far," and it did go too far. But again, once you push things too far, it's different, man. When you're like, when it's all like tongue in cheek, right? Like, so after Biggie and Tupac were dead, and he started having like some of the other beefs after the fact with like the 50 cent stuff and yeah. like even a lot of that, like it, it just turned more into like the banter, right? The back and forth. You know, and then for a while, even like before that, you had like the diss tracks going back and forth with Eminem right. and those guys. Like that never took it to a violent level. Like that was always more on like, you could tell from the lyrics and the way everything was approached, like it was just meant for, like that was the angle, right, of how to like promote the, the you know, the battle or the beef. But I don't know, man, like the way that Biggie and the Tupac, again, I'm a white guy from Long Island, bro. Like I don't roll that way. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't listen. Again, it actually, Tupac Changes is one of my favorite songs of all time. Oh, that's a great song. You know, like. I actually love that dude. When that when that piano kicks in, da -da ding ding ding, da -da, I get chills every time, bro. Like that is, and he he kills that on that track. But again, everything that they rapped about and everything that they believed in is just I felt like was such a, just a, such a, a bad bad abomination of like good music and good good talent. And look what happened; they both wound up dead. <laughs> Shout out to Incorrigible Goat Slayer, RIP to Easy E, another one of my favorites. It's race time, the Crown Prep series. Good luck if you're in it. Mo walking a real fine line on not getting canceled here on Saturday Night Races. And they're off here, and it's Gene Vibes. Gene Vibes runs out along with Alfie Boom, and it's Halunga the Stanza down at the rail for third. Also showing early speed here, that's Norsey Farm with H. Diora, and Porsche Boxer around out the top six. Only about five lengths to make up as they make their way into the first and only turn here in this five 
furlong affair. Seems like every race has been a marathon, but we got a short one here as H, the area, wants to get going here early and opens up by six now over Lunga Distanza, who's down at the rail. And on the break of two, that's Space Bonanza, who actually goes right on by here as we head off the turn. Street lights are on. We're heading for home. Don't want to piss off Mama. Daddy's got a belt, but it's H. Diora now by two. Trying to hold on here is Helen of Troy. Comes flying down the center of the track into the final hundred. But it's going to be back on black with Helen of Troy trying to chase down H. Dioria, but not going to have enough time. As H. Dioria is going to win this one over back in black and Space Bonanza. Shouts out big brain stables gets the win in the five furlong grade one sprint with H Theoria. And I don't know what happened to Hot Sauce. He was the number two horse. I saw him at the back of the pack at the end. Usually I run him in sprints too, but not today. 18th place. Stinky Shoes 20th place. Still balling 14th place. Man, that was a crazy race. All right, let's get set up for the next one. Next race starts in 15 minutes. JC was behind it all in my thoughts. Uh, actually, uh, it's really interesting. We can get into... Huh? Who killed Biggie and who killed Jay? Click uh, in the right stick. Yeah, click it in. Who killed Sorry. Biggie and who killed Tupac? Uh, it's There's a bunch of theories about it, but I think a lot of it had to do with Puff Daddy. I think Puff Daddy oh, had a lot to do with the death of uh, Tupac, but I can't remember. I mean, it's been a while since I looked into it. There's some really interesting details, and not all of it is uh, completely conclusive. Dennis O'Connor says, Frankie Skinner, CCR Vetter, Dave are my go-to uh, around the house car, it's DMX. Ooh, pack bones. Oh, pack. I said pack bones and run DMC. Uh -huh. Have I heard some DMX in a long time? Rest yeah, see, I'll give you a little more uh, backstory on it real quick, right? So, now again, maybe the time area you grew up because you said that was music you grew up with. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did. I grew up with, you know, Flock of Seagulls and shit in the 80s, right? Like, <laughs> so I grew up in a recording studio. My dad was a musician, produced music, and like, our whole thing was, man, like, you respected the craft, you respected it, and, like, dropping in bombs and the way the rap was, you know, again, handled during that time frame with gangster rap, like, that was just really shunned upon in my household. Like, I, from a musician standpoint, that, like, that was... I used to do beats for people, and if they started spitting anything, anything like that, it was like, it was like, yo, get out of my house. Like, it ain't <laughs> going on, it ain't going on here in this house, you know? Like, it was that type of deal. Thanks, you know, man. if you were doing Eminem-type stuff, where you're just, like, making fun of stuff and going on rants or whatever, like, that's cool. But, you know, if you're some scrawny little white dude or some, you know, shy little black guy and you're hopping on the mic trying to be tough, I don't know, man. I never found that very believable. <laughs> but that was gangster rap back then for a lot of people. Yeah, and it got popular for a while, too. Incorrigible Ghostwriter says, The Comic-Con Tuesday is a good book in physical form, first appearance. I know, I was trying to tell Mole about it. Mo says, no, it's not anything special. But I've been hearing Giant Size X-Men number one is going to be a comic to look for be excited whenever it drops and it finally dropped i just don't think mo remembers uh seeing it on any of his top 10 comic lists it's probably like around number 11 or 12 this is a big one mo maybe listen like i said if it, if it sits outside the top 10 you know it, it could still be valuable right and oh, i think yeah. maybe maybe i'm not maybe i'm coming across the wrong way here like i'm not saying don't go for the drops okay but I'm just saying, when people are like, oh, you're either a flipper or you're a collector. Like, maybe I'm just realistic. I know I can go for a drop, and if I get something that's worth money, you know, it's just going to go down. Like, we know it's just going to go down. It always happens. Until they give us a reason to see otherwise, and we see it with our own eyes, everything's just going to go down. So you get it, you hope for a secret rare or a good number, and you sell it. Yeah, you, know, you wait a couple weeks, and you buy it back. So, like, I do like collecting these things. Don't think I don't like, like any of this stuff. But I just don't think like getting this stuff and overpaying for it on the marketplace is ever worth it, especially nowadays. I don't know. True. Not not everything goes down though. If you can get into stuff at the right time, for example, I saw the ASM number twos. Uh, when that comic dropped, it was I think seventy five hundred total editions, and plus it's a pretty important comic, and people were really not uh, valuing them very much. So I bought over ten of them. I bought like twelve of them for seventeen gems each, and now I'm selling them back for twenty four gems each two weeks later and then the c3po uh that i had mentioned to people before i bought at 520 sort of the 800 now it's up to over a thousand because it's only 477 editions so sometimes there's opportunity in the market still but i mean it's so rare that it actually <laughs> goes up that it's you got to be gambling a little bit honestly I, I think i've turned into a little bit of a collector that's why i don't mind when my lamborghini prices go down because i'm not selling those i like them i'm holding them so that makes me a collector at heart right 
BD Hendricks says, these races are tough. I like the after 5 p.m. ones better. Too bad it's ending. It's really going to be interesting whenever it's real money only races. Then you're going to really have to want to race to get into it. Uh, Genuine says, Tupac was the best. Tupac would be in my top 10 for sure. Cordial Ghost Slayer says, going to get as many as possible to flip, but ultimately we'll be fine with common and uncommon long term. Yeah, I'll probably buy as many as I can on the drop on Tuesday, and then I'll be flipping in the market. Probably uncommons or rares. That's my new thing because the professional flippers, I mean the uh, snipers, the ones that you can't beat because they're so quick, are always sniping the commons. So I've been get, having better luck of getting low serial numbers at floor price, sniping different rarities, and trying to stay away from what the pros are sniping. That's my plan anyway. And it's smart. And I think I think I watched you do that with one of the ASMs. I don't know if it was two or three when those two dropped, like back to back or whatever. Yeah. You were picking up uh was it the ultra rare? Uh or maybe yeah. it was the rare. Uh I think that was ASM four. I picked up uh like three or four of the ultra rares and I bought those really cheap too and sold those back for a profit. Yeah, and I and I remember looking at those two at the, at the time, just being like, "Wow, those are really, really underpriced." Yeah. You know, again, for looking at what other comics. I'm just saying, like, when these when these comics drop and like you get these, you know, like you know, you know, when you're on stream and you're like, "All right, everything's delivered," you know, let's wait for that pump and wait for that surge, right? Like sometimes we see it. Yeah. You know. We used to always. But it just seems see like, it, but now not so much. We, we, exactly. We used to always see it, right? Right. Which either you know makes you believe like bots, right? Manipulation, you know? Hey. After what we saw with the Spider Man's being in VB's wallet, I mean, hey, it might have been VB even manipulating the drops, you know, back then. Maybe it wasn't all, you know, yeah, I would have the been Telegram I was bots. Surprised that you know, maybe you said that the reason that they increased the supply of the drops by so much was because the market prices were too high. Like, I don't understand how that what, how that logic logic works. Like, he was upset that we were making too much money, so he made the prices higher so that nothing would be worth more than retail. Or he made the addition sizes higher so that nothing would be worth worth more than retail. How is that a good business move? I guess you make more money off of the initial sales. Well, you have to get people in the door. And you can't get people in the door if there's nothing on the shelves, right? I mean, listen, I, I give them a lot of crap, but there are some things that they say that make sense. I mean, they do have to almost be like a Walmart or Target where like people could come in and they can have some like you know Toby type stuff where it's like you know a lot of mid size, a lot of you know big large run, but you know for the people that just want to have something to throw up in the BB verse, whatever the hell's going on, great. But then you know you have the people that want to run and collect things and go for like super rare items, but you got to get people in the door because they're never going to even experience any of it or know about the secret rare drops that are worth a lot of money, you know. That's without true. coming in for something right i mean if they log in they're like oh everything's you know on the marketplace however much money they're just gonna leave yeah. I, I think at least yeah and one big barrier of entry is the whole kyc process that you have to go through no matter what before you can start buying on the app but now they're saying that they're going to allow people to go for drops without kycing but they can't sell or buy anything on the market until they kyc uh, you think that's going to be a good move because i just worry that maybe bots can make hundreds of accounts now that are not KYC'd and then just KYC the accounts that actually get the big drops. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that, that's definitely something to worry about. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, well, if, if the bots all got, you know, NFT, got the, got the drops, but they weren't ever able to KYC, that would actually help, you know, the, if, if once you can confirm that those NFTs are locked away, right, you can pretty much just burn them, right, and from your mind, because they're not, if they do have a hit the market, then someone's got some explaining to do. <laughs> well, I mean, I would you know, think that if I was a botter and I had a bunch of, say we have 500 bot accounts and we go for these big drops and uh, we hit on 100 of them and we got fake KYCs for 20 of them, then we'll KYC those 20, cash it out. But the other ones that hit, you can use those to go for the next drop. And then uh, whenever you get some more KYCs, because they just buy the KYC info off of Telegram and just KYC them one by one. I'm sure people have multiple multiple KYC accounts. Uh, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. And but you know what? you do have to face scan to cash out, so maybe not. Yeah, that's true. I've never actually had enough gems to even enable that. Um, <laughs> They just they just continue to milk me, but you know, it, it is it's it's interesting. I just I don't know, man. Again, I love everything about VV. I love the idea of it. Um, again, the biggest IPs, the biggest well-known franchises in the world, all exist here on VV. But 
True. Their answers and their their progress and like just the way that they handle that part of it. Oof. I, I, like if I was dating someone like that and they just kept on treating me like that, man, like they would no, nah, they would have been gone a long time ago. But I, you know, I'm still here. I'm still and here. I don't <laughs> I don't publicly advice. I don't publicly go after them, you know. I know you don't either. You don't like go out of your way to like, you know, go after them. But you know, no one cares what I got to think really with my four hundred freaking or eight hundred Twitter followers. So I just usually just kind of sit back and watch and some of the things that people run their mouths on all day, man, I'm like, you guys need to get a freaking life. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, some people get mad about crazy stuff like the search bar. Dennis O'Connor says, I've been listening to the Marty Ray Project. Does a bunch of covers of old popular songs, acoustics. He's pretty good. I haven't heard of Marty Ray, but I do like um, I like, like cover bands. And uh, if you know who Brian Ray is, a I think he's the guitarist for the Beatles. He actually follows me on Twitter, and I've talked to him a couple times. Genuine says, low editions for me. 250 comic secret rares. I'm all about the low editions too, but I'm kind of big into the ultra rares now. 500 editions on those ultra rare covers, and they're exclusive covers, and you get them at much lower prices than the secret rares. That's kind of been my new thing to, to look for. Incorrigible Ghost Slayer says, all the NFTs need some kind of utility, even if it's just a discount on related merchandise. See, does it have to be a physical world utility? I always figure that the VB utilities are going to come from the metaverse, and the VB verse. Uh, if you have an Aston Martin, then you get to drive an Aston Martin around. If you have a Todd McFarlane Batman, then you get a Todd McFarlane Bat Batman skin. But I don't know. If they did have real world utility, that'd be even bigger because that'd be newsworthy. You know, that's something that other people would see you using that at a physical place, whether it be at a, um, a store or something, getting a discount. And they're like, how'd you do that? Oh, it's an NFT. What's that? Blah, blah, blah. That's a good way to spread the good word of NFTs. Flow LV is in the chat. What's up, man? Says let people let people to buy from the market without KYC, but don't allow them to go for the, the drops. Ooh, I see how you're doing it. You're switching it up a little bit. Yeah, I kind of like that idea better than going for the drops. The drops might end with a bunch of bots. Genuine says Mo is funny. Yeah, Mo's a funny man. He's a skeleton. Physical, I mean, physical. Incorrigible Ghost Slayer says physical utility is necessary for mass adoption. The physical Is it though? The physical utility is necessary for mass adoption, but not necessarily through VV. A lot of physical utility is going to be like people are going to have NFTs that are associated with their driver's license or their house deed or whatever, their car, um, their cool. their insurance. I mean, there's going to be physical utility that makes people understand what NFTs and digital collectibles and what blockchain technology is. What do you think? But I mean, I, I do I agree with that. But I, I think I think if everyone's sitting there waiting to get like, you know, Gucci handbags and physical redemptions on things that we buy. Like, I think that's a freaking pipe dream. Good luck with that. Um, but like I said, I think what I was talking about earlier is more of a possibility where like you have your VB, you know, app linked to your phone and your wallet. It knows exactly what you have in your collection. And as you walk around town, again, your phone always knows where you are. And if you go walking by a business, they could actually just know that you have the VB wallet within your radius of their store. And then the Deadpool can come sliding out of the doorway with like an advertisement being like, Hey, sweet chief, come and buy, buy from here. You know, like they can interact with you. And again, personalize your environment, everything around you. Again, you, you know, have to have like the AR goggles or whatever, stuff like that. Right. But you know, they can very easily do that. You know, and I think that's going to be more of the approach to me. I always think of back to the future. Remember when back to the future, when Marty's walking like downtown and like jaws is coming out of the movie screen and like yeah, all that, absolutely. that's how I see this whole thing going. And it's already starting to happen in Japan. Yep. You ever see like those big 3d yes, uh, billboards? Crazy. Uh, those uh, things are insane. Dude. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. You know, so that's how I kind of see things going. And those billboards are actually perfect, you know, evidence that it can already happen without the, without the AR goggles, you know, but it will be way cooler and, you know, easier to pull off when you just, it's in like built into your regular glasses or your sunglasses or whatever. So shout out to Alejandro. Yeah. That's what I picture too. Like, uh, whenever you drive by my house in the physical world, if you have your AR glasses on, you'll see my Lamborghini in my driveway. Exactly. Guess, that it, exactly. It's race time. Yep. Good luck if you're in this one. We now interrupt this VV Weekly show. Show I like to call. Podcast coming soon on the flip. And they're off. It's Jeepers Creepers along with Grease Lightning here from the outside. And it's White Vin who joins these two along with Master Lambo down on the inside. 
back on the rail, this TFI Kachi the Totora, who rides along the rail here, tucked in with a ground saving trip. And Pope John Paul III rounds out your top six here as they make their way around the opening turn, opening quarter, and twenty-three and change. And Grease Lightning is on his way, almost out in the crowd here on the middle of the track, but in the lead here nonetheless. And it's a break of two, it's cheaper as Creepers now, who starts to pull up alongside the leader to press the issue with Running Wild. And it's Pope John Paul II, not to be confused with Pope, Pope John Paul III, sorry about that. And then it's White Vin. White Vin runs along in fifth. And Rolls Runts is rounding out the leaderboard here. Half miles coming on in 48 and change as we continue our way here in the Crown Prep Series on a beautiful Saturday night. We're rolling out here at the end of V2. Don't forget to like that stream, chat, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But for now, back to the track, and it's Jeepers, Creepers, who still looks to hold on here as the cavalry will head off the turn and head for home. And it's Jeepers, Creepers on the outside. Pope John Paul II now is starting to get going here, and Master R. Boom as well is showing interest. Raring up here is Pope John Paul II looking for help from above, and Pope John Paul II going to hold on here over Master R. Boom and Rolls Runts. Pocono and GVT Racing Stable gets the victory in the Grade 1 race with Pope John Paul II. He's a junior, and he gets the win. Let's see where my horse ended up. I had one of my horses in here. Oh, man. Way down here. Where are we at? I don't see. Oh, Egg Smuggler. Egg Smuggler was in there. Ninth place for me. And I thought I had a second horse. I guess not. They might not have uh, got picked. A lot of these races are going to be 30 or 40 horses entered, but only 20 of them get to race. So usually they take the top 20 of uh, the ranks, like the S's, the S pluses. And we got three races left, y'all. Two more Crown Prep Series races. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe only two races left. Oh, we only got two races left, y'all. We're at the end of the night. One Crown Prep Series race, and then we got the third time derby. Let's check the third time derby and see who the leaders are, which horses are on the top of the leaderboard. In the Derby series, uh, if I can, I think I can still check that if I go right here. Qualifier points leaderboard. It's Mr. Jockey Soulmate from Pocono and GVT on the top of the leaderboard. And it's all Pocono with first, second, and third. He's got Papillon up there, or Papillion, I'm not sure. Poseidon is in third, and then Wimbledon and GVT Turf also has fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh. I think he's the only one racing this week. He's got the top eight spots. Let's <laughs> go. Congratulations. I'm assuming he's going to win this race. Well, all right, let's check out the uh, – actually, let's check out the third time derby before we check out the next race. We got plenty of time before the next race starts, and I do want to check out the horses in the third time derby, see if we got any homies in the chat that are in this race. Uh, like we said, Pocono and GVT are going to have a lot of horses. Valley Happy is in this one. Fleet Feet, not sure who Fleet Feet is. I've seen that uh, stable a few times. Don Star Racing. I think we're going to be pushing for Valley Happy. That's the only one of the friends of the uh, stream that I ever see hang out with us. So we're with you, Valley Happy. We hope you win that uh, third time derby, the last third time derby. I feel like you should get some type of NFT trophy or something when you win the derby. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I mean, you know, it's maybe okay you to be should, doable maybe once, you once everything some, goes live. Yeah, make some derby trophies, Mo. And if somebody wins the derby while they're in, on the stream in the chat, then we'll send them a trophy. Well, I wanted to do that. That was the original plan, but oh, then cool. I found out that you can't mint the 3D freaking objects on oh, Solana yeah. and actually have them look cool. So that's why I was trying to get the ask so people, weird. like, well, is it weird if I mint them on Matic? <laughs> oh, he dropped you know? really on oh, Caddyshack in the last race. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure why they would even do it, because with Matic, it comes out 3D, but nobody, I mean, everybody kind of jokes around on Matic. They don't like Matic NFTs, because <laughs> they're cheap. Wow. I don't, know. Well, I don't care if you're talking about either. trophies for people and their participation. Like, hey, listen, you can say they're cheap or whatever they want. They just haven't had mass adoption. Like I said, dude, this ZK roll-up stuff that's rolling through Matic uh, the next month or two, when that stuff goes live, ooh, it's going to be big. Real, real big, because that's when the banks come in. That's when, like, real, real companies start to come in, and they're already waiting. You know, they're, they're waiting at, ready to throw money at it, man. Trust me, it's that's going to be huge. I know and I'm in a project... About I was going to say, I know that they were talking about those Matic roll-ups for a long time, so I, it is a big deal yeah. whenever they finally drop. Yeah, ZK roll-ups, yeah. I, I learned a lot about those like a year ago. I was uh, them and uh, with Loop Ring. Loop Ring's a big one, too. Actually, which reminds me, I need to buy some more Loop Ring before everything starts to go back up. But anyway, 
Um, not financial advice. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I own the Doctor Disrespect game. I paid fifty bucks for it. That's automatic. Man, those things are up to like seven hundred, eight hundred bucks right now. Oh, really? Nice. I got the, I got one with a sniper rifle on his back. Only one percent out of ten thousand has them, and uh, the cheapest one is like like four ETH. Wow. Nice. Yeah, I know. Uh, Doctor Disrespect's very popular, so that makes sense. Oh, that game is, I'm telling you, man, like, that, that Dr. Disrespect game, uh, Dead Drop, and 12 AM Studios, that is single-handedly going to be the reason as to Web3 gaming, whether or not it takes off in the next five years or not. Because oh, yeah. if that game comes out with the amount of publicity that Doc gets, and the amount of followers that he has, and different platforms that follow him, if this fails, <laughs> good luck selling this freaking hope to anybody else, man. It ain't gonna work, you so know? The game hasn't been released yet? Well, they have, that's what they do a little bit different. So they have snapshots that if you own a variant, like I own, cost me 50 bucks. So I basically paid $50 for early access like we do on every other video game. So I don't know why people are crying. Sure. And I got a, you know, I got a PFP and now that PFP is worth anywhere from, you know, if I wanted to sell it today, I could probably sell it for like 800 to a grand. But the actual, like I said, value of the sniper rifle is like four ETH. So, nice. you know, but yeah, he's got snapshots that come out uh, every but they were doing them every like every six weeks, but now they're going to like a two or three month development cycle. Because dude, they've come a long way with this man. Uh, Crypto Stash, I think, does a lot of stuff on Dead Drop. So, you know, I know you're not really like a big like Web three gamer unless you're like a closet Web three gamer. I don't know about it, but you know, I don't do PC games much. I'm, I'm more of a console gamer. I'm the same, but I do have a PC that can run it and. Again, I just bought it because I was like, oh, I get a PFP and it's not a disrespect. Like, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You know? There's tons of PC gamers out there. So if that hits big, then it would be nice if they actually incorporated NFT somehow with uh, League of Legends because that's the big one that everybody plays. I never did get into it. Did you ever play League of Legends? Nah, I'm not a big mobile guy. Yeah, yeah. I know people uh, say that it's awesome. I did play World of Warcraft for a while. That one... Whew, that one was a. I got addicted to it for like six or eight months. I had to put it down. I was like, uh -huh. it's too much. Oh, I love WoW. I yeah, it. don't get it twisted. <laughs> WoW is a good game. That's fine. My <laughs> problem with, yeah, my problem with League of Legends and MOBAs, and it's actually my problem with a lot of games nowadays. Like, you join a game like Overwatch, right? And everyone plays like their characters, right? You join a game, and like, I'm a sniper usually when I play games, and I'll snipe the crap out of anybody with a controller, you know? Sure. And you like, Oh, don't you know that snipers really put our team at a disadvantage? Okay, you need to play this guy. And I'm like, well, you need to play that guy. I'm like, because I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't sign up to play who you want me to play. Like, I play the game that I play. And anyway, it always turned into this whole back and forth. Like, well, that's not the meta. That's not how Ninja does it. I watched a YouTube video. Like, bro, cut me a freaking break. Wow. And then, you know. <laughs> Fast forward 10, 15 minutes later, I'm at the top of the leaderboard. They're crying because, you know, we're losing anyways, but I'm at the top and I'm still alive and they're dead. You know, stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. But, dude, it's just, it's, it's freaking funny, man. Like, MOBAs and League of Legends and Dota, Overwatch, those are like the prime games for that shit and it drives me nuts. Absolutely yeah, crazy. My kid plays Overwatch. I play Call of Duty, but I play solo. I'm always, even in Fortnite too, I'm solo. I don't need no teammates. I do it myself. I'm stealth. I'm like a, I'm like a lone wolf sneaking up behind people. I don't want no teammates giving away my position. I'm, I'm solo, baby. What's up? What a hell, boy? Says Vault. What's it like speaking to most avatar instead of his real face every week? That's not your real face? No. No, no. Oh, I didn't even know. Well, I guess it's going to be awkward now. Thanks a lot. I had no idea. Incorrigible you ruined slayer. it, man. Dang you it. ruined the illusion. Now I'm, now I'm ashamed. <laughs> yes, well, it is what it is, y'all. It is what it is. Incorrigible ghost. I gotta hide my face. There we go. That's much better. I appreciate that. Now I okay. Now I feel better. I hope Hero does us pro sport legends drop on NFL, NBA, NHL, and MLB Hero. Like as in cards. If they had sports cards, oh my goodness, Hero with sports cards. I don't know. That would be pretty wild. I don't know. I'd have to get back into it. I kind of like Hero. I don't know why I don't like Hero that much. I guess, I don't know. I really don't know why. I never got, I, did, I don't want to have to go out and try to find the packs. I went to, for a while there, I went to like four or five different Walmarts trying to find Hero packs. Never could find a Hero pack. And from then on, I was just kind of like, man, forget this. Well, because you were doing it at the hype and I was doing it too. I had zero luck at all the Walmarts. But I actually made some good friends that I still talk to. Nice. Uh, bumping into them in like the random Walmart, you see each other like three days in a row. It's like, well, this is awkward. <laughs> and, and then like you go to the next Walmart, like two towns over, and then like 
they come walking down the same aisle and you're like shit right you know <laughs> then you got uh, that happens a lot around here because yeah. everybody's going for baseball cards to walmart at least they were mm. man it got ridiculous on the baseball cards you'd have to stand in line i wouldn't do it at all but it was always these 40 year old men with uh socks and sandals standing in line to buy the baseball cards pushing the kids out of the way it was just it didn't seem right to me i had to get out of that i couldn't do the whole opening the new packs and standing in line and searching Whew. Dennis O'Connor says I was a need for speed and a GT guy. Ooh, you're racing the cars. I do most of my racing on uh, GTA. I like playing their racing. Incorrigible Ghost Slayer says I picked up the last six individual packs today at Walmart. See, I never find them at Walmart ever. What's up, Mike Sowers in the house? Got a bet in on Papillon against my own horse. Uh-oh, yeah, Papillon is a strong horse, though. And Papillon, yeah, well, Mike Papillon. Papillon, what does it mean? Pa Papillon, I don't know. I, I it's like it, I said, Papillon. I city or something. I've heard that name before. I heard that word. I got an eye, eye racing setup. It's nice. Eye racing. I don't know what eye racing is. I'm a sports guy. I play the sports games. I play NBA eye 2K racing sick. pretty much every day. Maybe not every day, but <clears throat> uh, I'm playing a little bit of Madden now. We just downloaded Madden. Trying to get my kid to play Madden. He hates it. He runs the ball every time. I'm like, throw the ball. He's like, no, you'll intercept it. I'm like, no, just throw the ball. And then, uh, oh yeah, see, I'm the opposite. I'm like the Andy Reid of Madden. Oh yeah. And my friends, my friends will never play me in Madden anymore. It's not even fun for them. But uh, well, I can count on one. I can count on one dick the amount of times my friends have beat me in Madden. Oh yeah. So yeah. You're at it. Nice. Right. Oh, it's like that. I used to play. I used to play comp. I, used to, I made a. Uh, I made top four for the EA Tour when they still got to go town to town. Damn. I made it here in Brooklyn back in. Uh, well, last year I competed. It was 05, but a while back. Nice. That's good stuff. What's your strategy? What do you do? You're a runner. You run the ball a lot. You uh, throw the ball. Uh, well, I run a very, I run like a Peyton Manning type no offense. Idol. I've always run it. I run a very uh, symmetrical offense. I read the defense coming out, pick you up, man zone, run motion, go from there. A lot of times, you know, combos. If you know anything about like real NFL and like how combo, how routes combo together, you know, you'll kind of know like, well, if I run this guy on a, if I run this guy on a corner route, and I run the slot guy on a fly pattern, you know. If the safety is in a two deep zone on the deep right side of the field, he can't cover two guys at the same time. It's just physically impossible. But then it's a matter of well, if the, if the, if the corner now is shading on the inside, is he shading on the outside? If he's shading on the inside, well, that's a touchdown all day because I'm gonna throw it over the top right shoulder. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna step up two yards and I'm gonna tap it up to the tail, up to the right, and I'm gonna destroy you every time. But you know, but again, someone like me, when I'm playing defense. I know what people try to do with what I try to do. So I'm like, all right, cool. I run some really unorthodox defenses. Um, one of the guys I do some graphic works for, he was one of the top Madden competitive players for like over a decade. Nice. Problem right. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I man, I, I take Madden. Well, I used to take Madden very serious. Not, not really anymore. The game's also a joke nowadays, the past five years, ten years. It is? Yeah, bro. You play Madden and like you, it's, it's animation based, just like NBA 2K. These these sports games are animation based, and it's horrendous. Back in the day, if you had good if you had good stick move stick work, you know what I'm saying. You go up and then boom, boom, snap, snap. You know you make the guy run. Now it's like, oh no, EA is going to introduce this little three step stutter animation, and sometimes a guy hits me in my kneecap and I, and I stumble a little bit. It's like, eh. Yeah, sometimes you they know. do give you dumb animations when you're trying to play NBA 2K and you're going up for a, a dunk or something and they give you some yeah. little Euro step. I'm like, come on, I was not going to Euro step there, I promise you. Shout out to Genuine. Well, Play sim yeah. Flight Simulators are also fun, absolutely. They've talked about it, though, with NBA 2K, because 2K is definitely more animation-based than Madden. Yeah. Madden this year alone actually was way... Well, was it maybe last year. Whenever they went to the PS5 next-gen version, like fully, I think that was last year, uh, it's not as animation based now. It actually feels pretty fluid, but NBA 2K, dude, is so it's like it's called contextual animation, and like depending on what way your guy is like looking, turned, and stuff like that, like he just does some weird stuff, which leads to I don't know. Just I feel like you're not really controlling the player; you're controlling like a puppet of the player, and it's just to me that's not fun. I, again, I grew up playing fun video games where it was just a good time. I'm always playing Tetris, y'all. All right, it's race time. Good luck if you're in it. Tetris. I actually do like Tetris, though. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got two more on the docket for you. And 
and they're off here, and it's 14 inches dead with chicks, 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 tacks, and it is Doopy Liberty. That first horse name doesn't even make sense. What the hell is going on? But then it's Lotus as my indigestion once again, with Lotus and McPines probably out of the same barn. Round out the top six here as they make their way around the opening turn. And it's 11 furlong left turning a fair on the turf. Opening quarter in 24 and change, and it's Tick the Tax who runs at the front with Mick Pines not too far behind. Hey, that rhymes. But it's Mick Pines now with Tick the Tack, then comes 14 inches dead. And another break of two on the outside, it's Pokey Sweep. Princess Grizzly now starts to get rolling here alongside MTF2 as they make their way past the wire here for the first time. Everybody wave! And oh, looks like we might have our final injury of version two as the number three runner is out of here. Fib is watching to hold us out here as we get ready to head off into the sunset on version two. Good to see you, Fib. Thanks for showing up here one more time. As we turn our attention back to the race, it's Pokey Sweep now. Pokey Sweep who pushes along here and takes the lead by two. No, make it MTF2 now. MTF2 now. Oh, make it no Pokey Sweep now. It's Pokey Sweep now who takes the lead. And just like that, he kicks clear by a length. And MTF2 now is going to be happy just to run along second with Glouches, who also starts to advance from the back of the pack. And make it another three. There comes Princess Grizzy. Almost said Princess Glizzy. That would have been awkward, but I said it anyway. And now comes 14 Inches Dead, who starts to be re look for a rejuvenation run as he starts to get rolling once again here and moves up into second. As we ran a mile in 138. And here we go as we get ready to head off the turn and head for home. Get ready for the money shot, folks. It's 14 inches dead down the center of the track. And Princess Grizzy. Princess Grizzy now also trying to fight off Dairy Man on the extreme outside. As we got three, maybe four across the track into the final hundred. But it's Princess Grizzy and Dairy Man now. It's going to be kicking it close. But no, it's going to be Princess Grizzy holding off Dairy Man and 14 degrees here in the crown prep race 12. Princess Grizzy from D Stables gets the win. Pocono and GVT Turf gets second and third place in the final Crown Prep Series race of Beta Version 2. And the last race tonight is going to be the third time derby. There's a D Stables horse, Princess Grizzy. Kind of cool. Uh, he's got like a Punisher. Oh, that's right. You can you can upload your own skins now, right? Your own silks for your jockeys. Yep. So how do you do that? Is that something you can do through uh, your stable? Yeah, it's in the uh, stable area where you like, design your, your silk colors and stuff. Oh, yeah, so you can upload your own logo now. Because that dude had a Punisher. His, uh, his jockey was wearing a Punisher silk. So that's pretty dope. All right, guys, we got one more race tonight. It's the big one. It's the third time Derby Series. Uh, before we get into it, though, speaking of Tetris, did you, did you see the previews for the new movie about tetris coming up that is the true story of how that movie was made and how crazy it was like the creator had to go to russia to get the license from them and he got like captured and held prisoner and they like threatened his wife and it was like super crazy no i haven't heard anything about that i'm, yeah, so I'm been too busy out. uh getting ready for a cocaine bear i didn't see that one though hey, i don't know about cocaine bear i'm probably gonna wait till that hits dvd but the Tetris movie is going to be a DVD. I'm just kidding. Netflix, whatever. Shout out to VV Arcades in the chat. What's up, VV Arcade? What's up, Base Lab? We got Base Lab in the chat, too. Yes, yeah, the last race of the night starting in 10 minutes. And it's the last oh, race shit. of Beta version 2. What's up? Hey, Arcades here. Hold on. Let me try something. <clears throat> here we go. Okay, chat. All right, chat. Here's what I want you to do. Hit that like button, chat. All right. We could do this all day, chat. We're going to have another giveaway here, chat. All right. We're going to do this every time now. Don't make me do this again. Hit the like button, chat. Only 14. I don't even know how many people are watching these days, but... <clears throat> this is his BB Arcade... Uh, uh, what's it called? In person impression, oh, impersonation, per impression, yes. impression, impersonation. The VV Arcade impression. It, I don't know if the voice is hitting, but the words was. It sounds exactly what he would say. <laughs> get them likes up, exactly. Shout out to Ronnie. Like get them totally. likes up. Yeah, yeah. Get the likes up, y'all. That's what Arcade tells y'all. And me and Arcade will be live uh, Tuesday, guys, for VV trivia. If you're a VV fan and you want to come by and hang out with us, we'll be doing trivia live on Tuesday after the big drop that everybody except for Mo is excited about.
Giant Size X Men number one. People are going to be pumped on that one. All the how much is it? Twenty seven ninety nine. Did they jack up the price on that too? It's to... probably going to be a hundred dollars retail. Now it probably will be like twenty retail. They, I don't think it's out. The medium article is out yet, but I do expect a higher price on that one. It is giant size. I don't even know if that means that it's. In what the hell does it even mean in digital form? I think it just means it's thick. At first, I, I think I did a video once, too, talking about the top 10 um, comics to come to VV, and that one was on my video. And I think in the video, I implied that it was actually large, <laughs> but it's, I don't think it is. I think it's just thick. I'm not a comic guy, so I don't know. My bad. My bad on that one. 68 pages. There you go. That's why it's a giant size. That makes more sense than actually being large, because who's going to carry around a large comic? I don't know why I thought that. But how would you know, I I'll probably go for it. Like I said, I have gems in my freaking wallet that they screwed me on anyway. I might as well. What do you mean they screwed you on them? What was it? The uh, Black Panther first appearance comic? Oh, yeah. Whatever one of those. The one that was like 20 bucks or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. I had like three gems, 379 in my account. So I went to go put gems in my account. And I, I got the drop. So what I always do is I secure the drop on my phone. Then I'll just go in on the, on the web app and just add the gems through there. And then when I refresh it on the phone, I still have my reservation for three minutes and I just grab it, right? Right. But anyway, so on this day, it kept on saying payment failed. And I was like, well, shit, I got to get this done because I only got, you know, 180 seconds. So I'm like, boom, boom, boom. I'm like, well, let me just try it again. Maybe I messed up. Uh -oh. I did it again. Payment failed. Oh, shit. All right, let me try a different card. Oh, shit. That didn't work either. And I did like, what, like four times? <laughs> Five times? Something like that? It was four. And it come to find out that once I refresh it, after, and I didn't get the comic, by the way. I did not get the comic. Um, and I went back and I refreshed it. And I had all them gems in my account. I was like, well, you got to be kidding me. Dang, it's kind of messed up. So they told you it was airing when it was actually going through, so you actually yep. bought them every single time? Yep, every single time. That's tough. Well, now you got a bunch of game, a bunch of gems. Yeah, yeah. you got to have some liquidity, liquidity if you want to snipe that market. you got to have the gems in. I always say preload. Preload, especially on a big drop, you got to preload. I hear so many horror stories about people who hit the Aston Martin Secret Rare but couldn't get their 1,000 gems in in time, and it got thrown back out for a rebound. Right, I mean, listen, yeah. I do preload, especially when it was like, oh, well, listen, every time I preloaded, by the way, never got the drop. Preloaded oh, really? for AF15, did not get the drop. Miles Morales, none of these, anything that was big, never got the drop. But like I said, that's why I've been successful every time doing it the way I've been doing it, especially since the web app has come out for All the right. public. Um, but like I said, this payment failed thing, now I know. So if that ever happens again, but... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was one in Sim Square, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. But you are right, though, with like sniping. If you don't preload to have liquidity in the market, you're definitely at a huge disadvantage, especially on. That's why I like when VB had, you know, when you were able to lock it. Remember when you could like lock the uh, the purchase? Yeah, yeah. I had, I had other problems, but it was good in, in some ways, yeah. Right. But like H oh, that HRO, um, on Palm, rather, that's how I snipe everything. I don't keep any money in my account. Oh, right. But every time I see a great snipe, I'm just like, Boom, grab it. Now I got five minutes to, you know, just load it up and boom, I get my, my maps and everything for nine dollars, ten what the hell people put things up for these days. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I didn't have the liquidity today. I was sniping the market even though I didn't go for the drop and I had like a hundred gems and I sniped like number seven hundred for thirty two, which is not a great serial number. I ended up uh, losing like 80 cents when I finally sold it back but because of that I only had 40 or 50 gems in my account and number 66 popped up for 99 gems if I could have sniped that if I would have had the gems that ended up ultimately selling for like 250 or 300 it actually got relisted by the person who sniped it for like 125 and I could have sniped at that time too if I had the gems because I knew it was going to be worth a lot because it was the Darth Vader poster in order 66 and uh, it was Mr. Evo who ended up getting it for that 125 and then he sold it for like 250 or 289 or something but if I, did, if I had the liquidity I could have got the snipe and that's that's one reason why you got to have gems in your account I got some gems ready for tomorrow I'm gonna be looking for serial numbers like 555 and stuff like that because those NFTs have a five right on their chest and I think those 555 serial numbers will be worth extra tomorrow that's my plan anyway all right let me read through the horses in the last derby of beta version 2 this is the big one third time derby last race of this whole entire beta entire beta we got rombi from pocono and gbt papillon from pocono and gbt look at these bets too lots of bets on these horses we got caddy shack boom from valley happy he's got over a million on him to win we got antiguan gal 
from OEB Racing, Silky Dupree from Fleet Feet, Pookie from Mario Jane Racing, Mr. Jockey Soulmate from Pocono and GBT Racing. That is the current point leader in the Derby Series. We got Niagara's Dab from Pocono and GBT, 14 per Mystery from Pocono and GBT. You got Xerxes. That's how I'm going to pronounce that one. From Balthazar Mangers, Hal MT from Wimbledon and GBT Turf. Ben Polino from Don Star Racing, Poseidon from Pocono and GBT. You got Deep 3 from Pocono and GBT. MSG from Pocono and GBT. Lazar from OEB Racing. Tacinda from OEB Racing. Pearlpin from Don Star Racing. Maud Dillon from OEB. And the number 20 horse is Kynuria Stag from Pocono and GBT Racing as well. The condition is yielding, so it's not going to favor horses with soft or firm preferences. It's all going to come down to who's got the most heart to win this last derby of the season, of the beta, of everything. And then starting next week, we'll be going into beta version 3. All of the races will be real money races, USDC. Uh, all the horses will be horses that are actually belong on or actually live on the blockchain. So it should be interesting how that four-week beta version pans out and then apparently after that is over four weeks after that begins we'll be going live with the actual game and all that is included with that what's the difference a big difference if there is one between this four week beta version and going live mo what's going to be the difference yeah besides the fact that you can breed when we go live well this i think it's still going to be a week like one week per season. So I think we'll have four derbies during this testing. Oh, I see. Okay. As opposed to, you know, but live, no it's going to be, yeah, no breeding, no retirement. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, so yeah, cause that would put the horses from two years old to six years old within the, the testing. So that would be fine. Sure. And yeah, but then when we go live. It's going to be, you know, one derby a month, every four weeks, you know, for one season. So I think that's just going to be, you know, the, the main difference is just going to be crazy accelerated for still another four weeks coming up. Yeah, you guys got to imagine how slow that's going to be whenever we go live. You'll have to uh, wait a total of three months whenever you breed a horse before you can actually race that horse. A three-month wait in between because, you know, you got a month where the horse is pregnant, a month for the first season, and a month for the second season. Then they can race the third season. So that's going to make the – it's going to slow the game down a bit. I don't know. These horses, I think, are going to have lots of races. Like, we're going to have horses with hundreds of races since uh, there's not going to be very many of them in the uh, environment for the first four weeks, at least. Well, for the first... It's going to be the same horses racing each other, right? Yeah, I mean, for the first three months, at least. Cool. And then it's like, you know, think of it this way, man. If you have really good blood... You know, you're winning money and you're winning races. It's like, yeah, you want to breed it. But at the same time, like, how much did you pay for that horse? Like, are you really going to be ready to retire it at that point? You know, and pray to the fact that the baby's going to come out just as good. True. You know, it's it's going to be real crazy, man. I I don't know. I know a lot of people retired right away in version two because it was like, all right, cool. I ran him for a couple of weeks, blah, 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 blah. It's Monopoly money. Who cares? But like now, yeah, you got to be real thinking long and hard. People are going to be. You know, it's gonna be a hard decision how, which way to go with it, if you want to go short term or long term with it. Uh, anyone wants to know if it's gonna be the same website URL? I'm sure when they go live, it won't be beta dot photo finish live. What about for version three? Is it gonna be beta dot photo finish live still? I'd imagine, yeah. I'd imagine it'll still be beta, yeah, same one. But I'm sure they will change the URL whenever they go actually live because it's not gonna be beta, right? I would think so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I would definitely I so, think so. Anyway. Maybe it's gonna be photofinish.com or probably photofinish.live right probably yeah they probably already have it yeah yeah all right guys it's time for the big one the last race of the season the third time derby uh good luck if you're in this race appreciate you guys hanging out with us on saturday night even though this was a special time for tonight and uh we'll be back next week hopefully here we go In a world of Web3 degeneracy, it has all come down to this, the final, third time derby of version 2. Getting ready to turn off the lights here. 
And they're off here one more time, the third time derby. And it's Poseidon from the outside who got the better of it along with Niagara's dive. And it's Mr. Jockey Soulmate with Deep Three. Back on the outside is Lazar with Ben Polino and Antiguan Gal. As Antiguan Gal now starts to round out here at the top of the leaderboard as they head off the first turn and pass the clubhouse for the first time in this 10 furlong left turning affair on the turf. And it's Poseidon. Poseidon now runs along here and opens up now by two over Niagara's dive. And another break three. That's deep dive on the extreme outside with Silky Dupree down at the rail. And it's Kynoria Stag from the 20 hole with Caddyshack Boom down in the blue silks at 17 to 1. Half mile is coming on and it's 48 and change. And it's now it's Niagara's Dave, Niagara's Dive even, down at the rail as Kynoria Stag chases along here on the extreme outside. Silky Dupree still runs here in third with 14 per mystery now advancing. This is the new face here on the board as they run along in fourth. And it's Antiguan Gal who starts to push up with Caddyshack Boom as well. As they got about seven lists to make up here to catch the leader. And they're running out of time to do so. Three quarters and one twelve. And we are getting close, folks. But Niagara's Dive. Niagara's Dive is getting further. Further from the pack. Further from the competition. Looking to set their mark here one more time as we ride off into the sunset. And it's Niagara's Dive by six now over Caddyshack Boom. And a break of two, and it's everybody else. So let's head back to the front where it matters. It's Niagara's Dive now, trying to hold on here as he rides him into the final 200. Niagara's Dive with Caddyshack Boom on the outside. Then comes Deep Dive with Mr. Jockey Soulmate into the final 100. He is swallowed. He is gone. It's Pookie and Deep Three to the wire. It's going to be Deep Three with a edge of your seat victory here. Perfectly timed ride over Pookie and Mr. Jockey Soulmate. Man, that was a close one. A thriller to end the beta version two. Pocono and GVT Racing gets the win by a whisker with Deep Three over Pookie from Mario Jane. And then Mr. Jockey Soulmate takes third place. Let's go. Great call, Mo. Great call, as always. Appreciate you, yeah, Terry Stud. Thank you, Dennis O'Connor. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us during Friday and Saturday night racing. The plan is to keep on doing this, even though I don't know how much racing I'm going to be doing with my horses. It'll depend. I'll have to do a little bit of testing on it and see see how successful I am. Well, I, a little bit of testing, but here's something I'm going to throw out there um, real quick. Go over the airtime here. Sure, sure. I know we got we got sponsors that want us to get off the air, but too bad. A couple things, chat. Again, do appreciate everybody hanging out. It's kind of crazy we've been doing this for as long as we have. <laughs> it's actually uh, it's kind of wild, but... Anyway, it's been a lot of fun, man. I have enjoyed version two doing it with you, Vault. Chat, I do appreciate you guys coming out. One thing I will say to you, Vault, and people in chat, again, talk to each other. One thing we can even think about doing, Vault, with people like me and you, you know, I don't really have much money to race my horses either. Maybe some people in chat like some of our horses, you know what I'm saying? Somebody wants to, you know, put up the entry fee for a horse, send it over to me. We could split, you know, we could split the prize. I don't care, you know, whatever. It works something out. I have Absolutely. no problems doing things like that. So we can even start to work things like that out. I own eight horses. Volt has two. You know, so maybe people can kind of come in and not have, you know, not have ownership of our horses. But, you know, maybe like pay to enter a race and maybe, you know, get some opportunity to win some money that way in a bigger race. Maybe a race that we wouldn't normally enter. Because I'm going to be joining like dollar, two dollar races, you know, five dollars maybe. That's you know, so. Too. And I did, I mean, I just kind of had this thought off the wind, though. I'm thinking about just setting up a whole entire phantom wallet. Uh, just for the stream and if people want to donate to that wallet during the stream we'll talk about it when the time comes maybe like somebody everybody puts in a dollar we got like 10 bucks we'll put 10 bucks on a horse that we think is going to win and try to build up uh that little wallet until we have enough to buy a horse with it then we'll have a stream horse that we run well that's what i told you guys from the get-go especially with your community right like like almost like a dow like get everybody together pull your funds together exactly yeah start placing some bets and yeah who knows maybe you guys can take you know 10 bucks and turn it into a thousand and buy yourselves a decent horse to run so that'd be a nice story especially if it's all broadcast live the whole entire time too all right guys appreciate y'all hanging out with us thank you bd henders thank you tutberry dennis genuine everybody in the chat bb arcade ronnie lito we will see you guys next week unless you're going for tomorrow's bb drop then i'll be live streaming that one as well all right mo have a good night bro all right brother later chat later chat